the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestsellers, all they're hyped up to be. The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. I am Ken. <laughs> Damn it! Every fucking time. <laughs> and I'm D. Am I D? And you are D. <laughs> and this is Chris. Hi. And Paris. Hello. <laughs> Once again, together as the terrible antique brook freaks to tackle <laughs> terrible antique Karnaki brook the freaks? ghost finder. A- are terrible we, are, are we, antique we, brook freak. <laughs> antique <we>, brook freak. <laughs> Are we trying to find antique brooks now? That seems hard. I can think of three <laughs> in the area. They're probably all antiques. Yeah, yeah. Sin and I'm Flesh like... Brook is my personal favorite, but Destruction Brook is a close second. Sin mm. and Flesh is incredible, yeah. The Puritans, oh. I think, were the best at naming brooks. Yeah. Of they all were cultures. The... I mean, they were the best at names. Like, think of all those children named, like, she who hath sinned and, like, Cotton, <laughs> yeah, you know, they really covered the gamut. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Anyway, but welcome today. <laughs> we tackle the final story in the complete Karnaki the Ghost Finder, the Hog. I think this is the Ooh. third time we've said it was the final story, but I think this time it's real. <laughs> this is the real final story. Uh, yeah, I think this is. Actually I just the kept last insisting. One. I just wanted it to be over, and I thought I could will it into existence, but now, hopefully, this is the time where we will finally conquer Karnacki's hog once and for all. <laughs> Who here is ready for Karnacki's hog? You know wow. what, Chris? Maybe maybe you can conquer Karnacki's hog, but I, I'm counting myself out. I've been practicing and preparing for months for this, and I'm ready. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, let's, let's get on the hog. Yeah. Well, the terrible antique book freaks has taken a turn already, and we haven't even begun the story. So saddle up. Saddle up. Now, for those of you just tuning in, Karnacki the Ghost Finder is a collection of Edwardian Sherlock Holmes ripoff short stories with a supernatural twist by William Hope Hodgson, published 1910. That's it. That's my history blurb. We can go. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I thought okay, you let's usually. Go. We can well, later. You, <laughs> You usually we don't have to do this. No, no, no. I, I thought you usually explain how we read it and like that we're gonna read the whole I story. Do, and we use don't I? Rules. Yeah, yeah. We're all just so ready to be done. We will be reading it Eye of Argon style, which means we will each be taking a turn reading until we either crack up or fuck up, at which point it passes to the next reader. And heckling is strongly encouraged. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> Get it all, all right. out now, because you're never going to have another chance again. It's oh. your last chance, everybody. You know, Fuck this place up. I don't yeah. think I can handle that. <laughs> I love doing these. These are, I'm sorry, Chris, but these might be one of, these might be my favorite episodes to record. If you think I haven't been stockpiling bad Victorian spec fic ever since I realized there were a finite number of Karnaki stories, you have another thing coming. It does not end here. <laughs> Ken, oh, my God. hero, my prince from another <laughs> realm. Yeah, I knew deep down that Ken was going to come in clutch. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh, um, thank Well, that means it's just going to be a brand new set of horrors for me at some point. So I guess that's at least comforting. At least it'll be different. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I was just going to say. You know, like if you've been in hell for thousands of years <laughs> and you've had your dick ripped off constantly and like reattached again, <laughs> when they switch into just stuffing uh, things up your butthole for the next thousand years that are too big for your butthole, it's probably at least interesting, right? There's variety. True. You know, I was going to say something, and then I realized how laughably stupid and untrue it was going to be. But I was going to say, yeah, maybe the next thing we read won't be 
so like in the closet uh, and gay, but no, it, of course it's going to be. It's Victorian ghost fiction. It's going to be gay, if not gayer it- than the Karnacki story. <laughs> Yeah, it's Victorian <laughs> fiction curated by me specifically, so I'm very sorry, but this trend <laughs> is going true. to continue. That's true. No, it's great. It's a good time. <laughs> uh, all right, so we never ever can figure out like who should start. Uh, and I can't remember who started last time. Do we have... Uh, D? have you started an episode? I don't think I have, honestly. Hey, you know what? You want to get up on the hog first? I'm going to get up on the fucking hog. Nice. I picture it right. as one of those like, mechanical bulls in bad restaurants. Yeah, but it's a hog. Yeah. yeah. There was that one bar that was on Bar Rescue that had the whale. What? Yeah, oh, it didn't really make that's up. That's in the- New Bedford, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, New Bedford? yeah oh, that was, that was Lee Bads, which has changed operation twice, I think. We had a mechanical whale restaurant in our very own city, and we never went? It was not a restaurant, and to to be fair, the other moments on Bar Rescue that featured this was, I'm pretty sure, like, bugs in the liquor, so, like, no, I wasn't inclined to go back again. I I was actually going to the designated driver. I don't care if there's bugs in the liquor. Uh, I thought you were going to say, like, it was hardly, a, it, it wasn't a restaurant, and it was certainly not a city. <laughs> I it was, was like, <laughs> I mean, it's really not. <laughs> Arguably <laughs> a city. Arguably. By government structure alone. <laughs> yes, that's the only thing holding it up. <laughs> we're a city in the way that Greenfield's a city. Listen to all of you desperately, desperately trying not to start this story so that Karnacki will never be over for us. <laughs> I know, no, exactly, no. exactly. I want to live with, like this forever. All right, I'm going to sit on the hog bench and let D take it away. All right, I'm looking at the hog. You guys, you guys know that now that I've made such a big deal about taking the like, point on it, I'm going to fuck up like immediately. <laughs> yeah, D-ray that's, that's take okay. the hog. <clears throat> Here we go. Karnaki, the hog. We had finished dinner and Karnaki had drawn his big chair up to the fire and started his pipe. Uh, that's not the first sentence I have. Oh, wait. Whoa, that's the first what? sentence I have. Uh oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Do we have different editions? <laughs> what the, the first, fuck? The first sentence I have is this. Jessup, Arkwright, Taylor, and I had each of us taken up our favorite positions and waited for Karnaki to begin. That's, that's my second sentence. That's what we sentence. have for the second sentence, yeah. What why do I not have Did, the first sentence? That's why a, do I Because our edition cut out one, one the, sentence? Oh no, okay, so we can't be doing this if there's different sentences, you guys. This well, it's the same sentence, you guys Eldritch. are just missing one. Yeah, okay, wait, what sorry. What if other sentences later are missing? Then it's we'll find funnier. out, because we have a other edition to co- cross-compare it to. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, yeah. I yeah. just heard something no, different it's f- panicked. No, it's it's fine, Like that is extremely weird. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Jessup, Arkwright, Taylor, and I had each of us taken up our favorite positions. <laughs> waited for Karnacki to begin. My favorite position was doggy style. Was hoggy style. Yeah. Hoggy style. What I'm going to tell you about happened in the next room, he said, after drawing at his pipe for a while. It has been a terrible experience. Dr. Witten first brought the case to my notice. We'd been chatting over a pipe at the club one night about an article in The Lancet, and Witten mentioned having just such a similar case in a man called Baines. I was interested at once. It was one of those cases of a gap or flaw in a man's protection barrier, I call it. Yeah? The condom broke. Yeah. (laughs) A a failure to be what I might term efficiently insulated, (laughs) spiritually, (laughs) from the outer monstrosities. You know, those evil I feel like you could go down to any crystal shop today and have this exact same conversation. Yeah, can confirm. Can confirm. (laughs) Yeah. From what I knew of Witten, I knew he'd be no use. You all know Witten. A decent sort, hard-headed, practical, stand-no-kind-of-nonsense sort of man. All right at his own job when that job's a fractured leg or a broken collarbone, but he'd never have made anything of the Bane's case. I love how he's like, yeah, he's a doctor, but like, pff, he can't figure out yeah, ghosts. Pff, whatever. Like, okay. Oh, oh, look at me, I'm a doctor, I'm gonna go fix your fucking leg now. Useless. Fuck, He's never crazy. even shot a gun down a hallway that's dark. Yeah. Yeah, he'd get fired if he did that. Fucking He's loser. An, he doesn't even own a horse costume. Like, who <laughs> is Fucking <he? laughs> lol. <laughs> For a space, Karnaki puffed meditatively 
at his pipe, and we waited for him to go on with his tale. I told Witten to send Baines to me, he resumed, and the following Saturday he came up. A little sensitive man. I liked him as soon as I set eyes on him. After a bit, I got him to explain what was troubling him and questioned him about what Dr. Witten had called his dreams. They're more uh, than dreams, he said. No, They're so no, real that no, they're actual no, experiences no, no. to me. No, no it's I amazing. Let it happen. I'm this vocal choice. I'm, I'm Ken, supporting this one. Let it happen. I support. This is majority rules. Let it continue. <laughs> they're oh, simply God. horrible, and yet there's nothing very definite in them to tell you about. They generally come just as I am going off to sleep. I'm hardly over before suddenly I seem to have got down into some deep, vague place, some inexplicable and frightful horror all about me. I can never understand what it is, for I never see anything, only I always get a sudden knowledge like a warning that I have got down into some terrible place. A sort of hell place, I might call it. <laughs> yes, yeah, hell place. No... Instead of just hell. Welcome to hell place. <laughs> That's actually the sequel to Melrose Place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes place in the early 2000s, yeah. and then goes into now. <laughs> <laughs> is Hell Place where Pinhead lives? Yeah, yeah, that's where he is. That's his uh, 508 Hell Place. Uh, yes. 666 Hell Place apartment. 666 Hell uh, Place. 420. Uh, 420 69. There, got him. <laughs> <laughs> where I have no business ever to have wandered. And the warning is always insistent, even imperative. I must get out, get out, or some enormous horror will come at me. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> some demon what a, what is like ball. some demon is like bro. <laughs> bro. Come at and me, scrub lord, I'm ripped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a giant hog. You can't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> can't you pull yourself back? I asked him. Can't you wake up? Can't you pull out? It's no. easy, man. Just can't do it. Pull, like, I don't see what the problem it. is. It's the easiest way to do it. <laughs> or you could just like get a barrier without a flaw in it. Yeah, D like a response. But, but I can't but, you know, feel or... anything, and like it just, <laughs> it's just. It's not. I need sensitive. to feel the ghosts. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I need to feel the edges of horror. What the fuck are no. you talking about? No, he told me. That's just what I can't do. Try as I will, I can't stop going along this labyrinth of hell, as I call it to myself, <laughs> towards some dreadful unknown horror. The warning is repeated ever so strongly. Almost as if the live me of my waking moments was awake and aware. Something seems to warn me to wake up. W that whatever I do, I must wake up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I must fuck. Uh... God, I must fuck. <laughs> I gotta fuck. <laughs> I can't pull out. It's all over. I live to, f I have to fuck. It. I live to fuck and I have to fuck to live. <laughs> I woke up and it's all over me. It's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That was like a double failure on my part. Oh, oh. All right, Chris or Paris, who's up next? Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right, all right, good luck, Chris. Something seems to warn me to wake up, that whatever I do, I must wake, <laughs> wake, and bake, and then my consciousness comes suddenly alive, and I know that my body is there in the bed. But my essence or spirit is still down there in that hell place, wherever it is, in a danger that is both unknown and inexpressible. But so overwhelming that my whole spirit seems sick with terror. So this is like textbook <laughs> sleep paralysis, yeah? Yeah, yeah pretty much. It, it really is, it really is. I keep saying to myself all the time that I must wake up, he continued. But it is as if my spirit is still down there, and as if my consciousness knows that some tremendous invisible power is fighting against me. I know that if I do not wake then, I shall never wake up again but go down deeper and deeper into some stupendous horror of soul destruction. <laughs> I've Simply played my stupendous. trap card and put Dark Magician in defense mode. <laughs> oh my god, that, now you're gonna get him. <laughs> so then I fight. My body lies in the bed there and pulls. And the power oh, yeah, down I'm there sure in that pulls. labyrinth exerts itself too. <laughs> So that a feeling of despair greater than any I have ever known on this earth comes on me. <laughs> no oh, shit. No. Huh? Oh no. Was that about this being the best Karnaki? Yeah, this is the best one so no far. No one said best, they just said scariest. I know that if I give way and cease to fight and do not wake, then I shall pass out. Out to that monstrous horror which seems to be silently calling my soul to destruction. 
Then I make a final stupendous effort, he continued, and my brain seems to fill my body like the ghost of my soul. What? I can even <laughs> open my eyes and see with my brain, or consciousness, <laughs> out of what my own the eyes. Fuck? You're seeing with your brain 24-7. Yeah, I... okay. I can see the bedclothes, and I know just how I am lying in the bed. Yet the real me is down in that hell in terrible danger. Can you get me? He asked. <laughs> come get me. No, mom, he's... Mom, mom, they got beer. You gotta come get me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, in the hell mom, place. Hell, I'm... hell is scary. Mom, get hell is scary. Me. Come get me. <laughs> mom, they're watching a scary movie. Do, do you guys realize that he did the Karnaki thing at Karnaki? Yes, I did. Yeah. So the next line is actually great because Karnaki goes, Perfectly, I replied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can well, you possibly understand? Well, you know, he went on, I fight and fight. Down there, in that great pit, my very soul seems to shrink back from the call of some brooding horror that impels it silently a little further. Always a little further round a visible corner, which if I once pass, I know I shall never return again to this world. Desperately, I fight brain and consciousness fighting together to help it the agony is so great that I could scream were it not that I am rigid and frozen in bed with fear. Oh yeah, rigid. <laughs> then, just when my strength seems almost gone, soul and body win and blend slowly, and I lie there worn out with this terrible extraordinary fight. I have still a sense of a dreadful horror all about me, as if out of that horrible place some brooding monstrosity had followed me up and hang still and silent and invisible over me, threatening me there in my bed. Do I make it clear to you? He asked. It's like some monstrous present. Yes, I said. I follow you. The man's forehead was actually covered with sweat, so keenly did he live again through the horrors he had experienced. After a while, he continued. Now comes the most curious part of the dream, or whatever it is, he said. There's always a sound I hear as I lie there exhausted in the bed. It comes while the bedroom is still full of the sort of atmosphere of monstrosity that seems to come up with me when I get out of that place. I hear the sound coming up out of that enormous depth, and it is always the noise of pigs. Pigs grunting, you know. It's just simply dreadful. The dream is always the same. Sometimes... I've had it. Dreadful oinking. Yeah, this is bizarre. Okay. Sometimes I've had it every single night for a week, until I fight not to go to sleep, but of course I have to sleep sometimes. Are you are you eating bacon every day? And is this just the soul of the pig you ate? It's fucking with you? the squeak of your greasy little heart still trying to beat amidst <laughs> the bacon wrapped around it. <laughs> Ten points to Ken. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's how a person might go mad, don't you? He finished. I nodded and looked at his sensitive face. Poor beggar. He had been through it, and no mistake. Tell me some more, I said. The grunting. What does it sound like exactly? A pig, dude! What are you not listening? <laughs> it, it's Your neck, a city slicker. The you fuck is it all le- <laughs> Fucking killing me. Why is he so stupid? It, it's just like... Pigs grunting, he told me again. Only much more awful. There are grunts and squeals and pig howls, like you hear when their food is being brought to them at a pig farm. You know those large pig farms where they keep hundreds of pigs? <laughs> As opposed to the pig <laughs> Who farms? Who needs this much assistance to figuring out where pigs come from? Okay. Quick theory, this story was written immediately after William Hope Hodgson, for whatever reason, had to go to a pig farm. It was just so completely disgusted by everything he experienced there, he immediately came home and typed this he up. He hated that shit. Wait, are you, oh are, you, are you serious or are you making that up? That's my theory. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I think that's a good theory. City solid. Slicker encounters pigs for the first time. Yeah, very, very, very solid. It all blends t in a queer, horrible way, I've heard it. A sort of swinish, clamoring melody that grunts and roars and shrieks in chunks of grunting sounds, all tied together with squealings and shot through with pig howls. I've sometimes thought there was a definite beach in it, 
For every now and again, there comes a gargantuan grunt, breaking through the million pig-voiced roaring, a stupendous grunt that comes in with a beat. Can you understand me? It seems now to shake everything. Now I just want, like, everything. a dubstep remix where all, like, the industrial sounds are replaced with, like, varying pig grunts, like a keyboard full of pig grunts. Don't worry, Ken, oh, I'm already- <laughs> Future Chris has, has already, already added exists. that in. I'm just letting okay, you know. Okay, thank God. Future Chris took a note, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Future Chris. That has to already exist out there. I will check with Tanner, but, like, there's gotta be a pig squeal, pig noise project somewhere. It's called job- it's called job for a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It seems to shake everything. It's like a spiritual earthquake. A howling, squealing, grunting, rolling clamor of swinish noise coming up out of that place. <laughs> and then the monstrous <laughs> grunt rising up through it all. I feel like I've said this already, but I really want to sell it to you. Swinish <laughs> clamoring. I, ha I See, that was my vocabulary for the day. I like to... Okay, well. An ever-recurring beat out of the depth of the voice of the swine. Mother of monstrosity, beating up from below through all the chorus of mad swine hunger. It's no use. I can't explain it, even though I just did a whole lot. No one ever could. <laughs> it's just terrible. And I'm afraid you're saying to yourself that I'm in a bad way. That I want a change or a tonic. That I must buck up or I'll land myself in a madhouse. If only you could understand. Dr. Witten seemed to half understand, I thought, but I know he has only sent me to you as a sort of last hope. He thinks I'm booked for the asylum. I could tell it. What are the odds that this dude just lives above an extremely specific secret club? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't be, be a pig before 5 p.m. <laughs> you might be onto it. Onto something there. Nonsense, I said. Don't talk such rubbish. You're as sane as I am. That's so, not saying uh -oh. much, Karnaki. Bad, yeah. bad sign, buddy. I'd be worried if I were you. Yeah, me too. Your ability to think clearly what you want to tell me and then to transmit it to me so well that you compel my mental retina to see something of what you have seen stands sponsor for your mental balance. All right, William, you gotta relax here with mental retina. It, that's a lot of words, that is. It's a lot for, like, a lot of shit going on I can here. see why this is the longest one. Yeah, you got, this is like a, a final term paper. It has to be 200 pages or else. Oh, the last two paragraphs were just a description of, like, what I look like at a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to investigate your case, and if it is what I suspect, one of those rare instances of a flaw or gap in your protective barrier what I might call your spiritual insulation from the outer monstrosities. I've no doubt we can end the trouble, but we've got to go properly into the matter first, and there will certainly be danger in doing so. I'll risk it, replied Baines. I can't go on like this any longer. Very well, I told him. Go out now, and come back at five o'clock. I shall be ready for you then, and don't worry about your sanity. <laughs> You're all right, and we'll soon make things safe for you again. Just keep cheerful, and don't brood about it. I put in the whole afternoon preparing my experimenting room, or across the landing there for his case. When he returned at five o'clock, I was ready for him and took him straight into the room. It gets dark this now, about 6.30. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the gags all prepared. You put on his dom jeans. <laughs> dom chaps. It gets dark now, about 6.30, as you know. And I had just nice time before it grew dusk to finish my arrangements. I prefer always to be ready before the dark comes. Baines touched my elbow as we walked into the room. There's something I ought to have told you, he said, looking rather sheepish. I've come so- Oh, there it is. I said I've uh, come how. He wants, he wants to fuck Karnaki in the pig Dude, outfit. He, he Oh my god, yeah, he's just like, oh, I just squeal like a little piggy. What are you gonna do with that? Turns out I'm a pig bottom, Karnaki. <laughs> How do you- Karnaki, I'm just, oh, I grunt and squeal. Like, oh, can you help me? Karnaki, how do you- how do you like your bacon? I do not like your bacon over hard. It's There's like, something I ought to have told you, he said, looking rather sheepish. I've somehow felt a bit ashamed of it. Out with it, I replied. 
He hesitated a moment. Then it came out with a jerk. <laughs> his, his penis <laughs> flew out of his pants. <laughs> I told you about the grunting of the pigs, he said. Well, I grunt too. <laughs> Yeah, spot on. Why we always oh. predict this? We're oh. always trying to come oh. in here like, no, this God. is gonna be fine. It's cool. Oh and every time, God. every story, it's some weird sex thing. He's vibrating Maybe shit. This will be the normal He's... one. No, we all not. Karnaki, we all know grunt down here. We all grunt now. <laughs> we have you, Karnaki. <laughs> I know it's horrible. When I lie there in bed and hear those sounds after I've come up, I just grunt back as if in reply. <laughs> I'm sorry? I can't stop myself. I just do it. Something makes me. I can't fucking handle it. I, can't. I never I told Dr. Witten that. I couldn't. I'm sure now you think no me mad, shit. he concluded. He looked into my face, anxious and queerly ashamed. We don't Holy. even have to make jokes. Yeah, no, this is fine. I mean, they're just gonna have their this is gonna be sex stuff. There ha it has to be. There's no other alternative. It's only the natural sequence of the abnormal events, and I'm glad you told me, I said, slapping him on the back. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody old pal. <laughs> you, big, you great big homo, you. <laughs> it's just like football, it's not gay if you hit him. Yeah, I heard that from someone smart. It follows logically on what you had already told me. I have had two cases that in some way resembled yours. What happened, he asked me. Did they get better? One of them is alive and well today, Mr. Baines, I replied. The other man lost his nerve, and fortunately for all concerned, he is dead. <laughs> um, we don't want any thanks. cowards living around here. <laughs> thank, thank God that <laughs> stupid son of a bitch killed himself. Good. Fortunately, he's Good. dead. I'm glad. Good God. I shut the door and locked it as I spoke, and Bane stared round, rather alarmed, I fancy, at my apparatus. <laughs> oh, I think everyone would be, yeah. What are you going to do, he asked. Will it be a dangerous experiment? Dangerous oh, no. enough? Dangerous enough, I answered, if you fail to follow my instructions absolutely in everything. Uh, this is some pigs, dom, sub stuff. Uh. Oh my oh, yeah. god. Oh yeah. I told you, you he's fucking... a pig bottom. Oh. ABO people need to eat, eat your fucking heart out. You'll never, <laughs> not even a, come close to this. We both run the risk of never leaving this room alive. Have I your <laughs> word that I can depend on you to obey me oh. whatever happens? Oh yeah, yep. Mm. Can oh, you sign boy. this contract? <laughs> <laughs> What's a butt plug? <laughs> What is Oinky play? He stared round the room and then back at me. Yes, he replied. And you know, I felt he would prove the right kind of stuff when the moment came. I began now to get things finally in train for the night's work. I told Baines to take off his coat and his boots. Then I dressed him entirely from head to foot in a single thick <laughs> rubber combination overall with rubber gloves and a helmet with ear flaps of the same material How attached. does this keep happening? Not... How are we so right Listen, every time? What? We said this. Is he legit this. putting on his dom jeans? Okay, like, what the fuck? Guys, okay, just He's no jokes are suit. gone now. We're, we're letting jokes out the door because the, the story's just going to do it for us. There's no point. We, we had to, yeah, we had to block. We had to go lock jokes out of the room. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> He's wearing a I rubber pig suit. I dressed myself in a similar suit. Oh my god, they're both in rubber pig suits. And they're both locked in a room together that he said not, they may not return from. Then I began on the next stage of the night's preparations. The First, lube. the Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> then, I showed him my oh hog. God. <laughs> First, I must tell you that the room measures 39 feet by 37. <laughs> what the fuck? What is this? <laughs> I yeah, must I that. tell you, full fucking Weirdi pig dungeon down here. Jeez, weirdest, weirdest BDSM start ever. I must tell you the measurements of the room we're in. <laughs> yes, yeah, so hold on. The room we're in at eight foot ceilings, hardwood. First, I must tell you that the room measures thirty nine feet by thirty seven, and has a plain board floor over which is fitted a heavy half-inch rubber oh, covering. Oh my god! Because in case we don't we go want pee -pee? any sound escaping from this particular playroom. Now, do oh, you it's, oh, like sound. My first thought was that he was going pee-pee in this room. Oh uh. no, it's absolutely to, to keep the, you know, the blood sports and water sports contained and for sound. 
I had cleared the floor entirely, all but the exact center where I had placed a glass-legged upholstered table. Literally what the fuck? Why Oh, for conducting electricity. They're doing the static model of electricity. Oh my god, he's gonna electrocute this son of a bitch? I mean, mean, the rubber floor would help with that, yeah. And that's why he's got a rubber suit on. Oh, this is brilliant, actually. Uh, This is kinky as fuck. Yeah. (laughs) A pile of vacuum tubes and batteries, and three pieces of special apparatus which my experiment required. Now Baines, I called, come and stand over by this table. Don't move about. I've got to erect a protective quote-unquote barrier around us, and on no account must either of us cross over it by even so much as a hand or foot once it is built. We went over to the middle of the room, and he stood by the glass-legged table while I began to fit the vacuum tubing together around us. And also on our penises. I intended to use the new Spectrum quote-unquote defense, which I have been perfecting lately. This, I must tell you, consists of seven glass vacuum circles (laughs) with the red on the outside and the color circles lying inside it in the order of orange, yellow, green, blue, (laughs) indigo, and violet. If there was any doubt as to what kind of club this was. Not gay. Not gay. Very not gay. He's certainly not a gay club, Mm -mm. that's for sure. Nope, nope, nope. Very straight. (laughs) Very not sexual. It's a very heterosexual club. The room was still fairly light, but a slight quantity of dusk seemed to be already in the atmosphere, and I worked quickly. Suddenly, as I fitted the glass tubes together, I was aware of some vague sense of nerve strain. And glancing round at Baines, who was standing there by the table, I noticed him staring fixedly before him. He looked absolutely drowned in uncomfortable memories. I'll bet he's pretty uncomfortable right now. Yeah, yep, pretty weird. For goodness sake, stop thinking of those horrors, I called out to him. I shall want you to think hard enough about them later. But in this specially constructed room, it is better not to dwell on things of that kind till the barriers are up. Keep your mind on anything normal or superficial. The theater will do. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Think about that last piece you saw, the gaiety. I'll talk to oh. you in a moment. Oh! So, specifically, a theater fan has entered into an insulated room and put on a rubber suit <laughs> to stare at some rainbow tubes with a strange man. Also, both rubber suits have ears on them. Yes. For the hog. Yeah, it's, it's mm. wicked good is what I'm getting out of this. I yeah. can, like... I thought that the um the the Jarvi was going to be the gayest most sexual one like nothing could ever <laughs> top it and Every then this single one is somehow but this one gayer and more deeply erotic than the last <laughs> yes and this one is the most erotic and the gay like for all the things Ken just named this isn't like we didn't know this before we read it like this no we read all this blind like fools yeah. we do yes so it's just incredible and i really feel like terrible is with us when this happens like i feel Terriblo is holding each of us yeah i feel terrible in this chilies tonight i feel terrible i feel terrible in in my heart he's there they're there we actually they're there they're there with me our God is an awesome guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Twenty minutes later, the quote-unquote barrier was completed all round us, and I connected up the batteries. The room by this time was graying with the coming dusk, and the seven differently colored circles shone out with extraordinary effect, sending out a cold glare. By Jove, cried Baines, that's very wonderful, very wonderful. My other apparatus, which I now began to arrange, consisted of a specially made camera, a modified form of phonograph with earpieces instead of a horn, and a glass disc composed of many tha... 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 Fuck. Tha... 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 I did... Alright. The hog. Hang on. The hog. Hang on, I gotta... I gotta get my... my suit out. I just gotta get the little ears on. <laughs> All right, get the ears on. All right, I'm um, I'm I'm in. <laughs> I'm ready? All right. All right, we got you. <laughs> I guess I'll just start at the beginning of the sentence, even though it's long. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, it's. Okay. I got lost in the fathom. 
Jesus. Yeah, dude, it's all right. We got we got fucking rainbow vacuum cubes and people in rubber pig suits. It's a it's a tough one tonight. Whew. All right. <laughs> uh, Chris, we were doing the uh, Long Island Karnacki, right? <laughs> Generic northeastern Karnacki for me. Oh, okay. yeah, Boston right. Karnacki. My other apparatus, which I now began to arrange, consisted of a specially made camera, a modified form of phonograph with earpieces instead of a horn, and a glass disc composed of many fathoms of glass vacuum tubes arranged in a special way. It had two wires lead into an electrode constructed to fit around the head. By the time I had looked over and fixed up these things, Fuck, I already fucked up. I missed the word three. Oh, no. God damn it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I think that's my shortest run ever. I didn't even. God oh, damn it. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, D. It, oh, okay, all right. <sighs> By the time I'd looked over and fixed up these three things, night had practically come, and the darkened room shone most strangely in the curious upward glare of the seven vacuum tubes. Now, Baines, I said. I want you to lie on this table. <laughs> now put your hands down by your sides and lie quiet and think. Oh. You've just got two- This is going a little Columbo. You've just got two things to do. I told him. One is to lie there and concentrate your thoughts on the detail of the dream you're always having. And the other is not to move off this table whatever you see or hear. Whatever happens unless I tell you. You understand, don't you? Yes, he answered. I think you may rely on me not to make a fool of myself. <laughs> Alright, that's a big ask, man. I feel curiously safe with you somehow. <laughs> oh my god. They're falling in love. Just, oh. Oh. Being around you, Karnaki, somehow feels like coming home. You're just, god, you're just uh. so... You make me feel so safe. <laughs> Your big arms, Karnaki. <laughs> Your I'm rubber suits, Karnaki. Oh, wait. <laughs> Does that count as a fuck-up? Because I did laugh no, at the end of that no, sentence. Right. I think okay. you're good. Yeah. It's taken rather by surprise. I'm glad of that, I replied. But I don't want you to minimize the possible danger too much. It may be horrible danger. Now just let me fix this band on your head, I added as I adjusted the electrode. I gave him a few more instructions, telling him to concentrate his thoughts particularly upon the noises he heard just as he was waking. And I warned him again not to let himself fall asleep. Don't talk, I said. And don't take any notice of me. If you find I disturb your concentration, keep your eyes closed. He lay back, and I walked over to the glass, disc arranging the camera in front of it on its stand in such a way that the lens was opposite the center of the disc. I had scarcely done this when a ripple of greenish light ran across the vacuum tubes of the disc. It vanished, and for maybe a minute there was complete darkness. Then the green light rippled once more across it, rippled and swung around, and began to dance in varying shades, from a deep heavy green to a rank ugly shade. Back and forward, back and forward. Every half second or so there shot across the varying greens a flicker of yellow, an ugly, heavy, repulsive yellow. And then abruptly there came sweeping across the disc a great beat of muddy red. This died as quickly as it came and gave place to the changing greens shot through by the unpleasant and ugly yellow hues. Oh my god, how much longer? About every seventh <laughs> second the disc was submerged and the other colors momentarily blotted out by the great beat of heavy muddy red which slept over everything. He's concentrating on these sounds, I said to myself. And I felt queerly excited as I hurried on, mm, I bet, sure did. As I hurried on with my operation, I'm covered in rubber. <laughs> <laughs> I... I I threw a word over my shoulder to Baines. Don't get scared, whatever happens, I said. You're all right. You're all right, kid. <laughs> I proceeded now to operate my camera. It had a long roll of specially prepared ribbon. Paper ribbon. Ah, fuck. Well, the word Chris. skips. The word skips are getting us today. Oh, oh word skips. Yeah. yeah, that seems to be the, the thing today. <laughs> it had a long roll of specially prepared paper ribbon in place of a film or plates. By turning the handle, the roll passed through the machine, exposing the ribbon. It took about five minutes to finish the roll, and during all that time, the green lights predominated, but the dull, heavy beat of muddy red never ceased to flow across the vacuum tubes of the disc at every seventh second. It was like a recurrent beat in some unheard and somehow displeasing melody. Yeah, the pig step. Lifting the exposed spool of paper ribbon out of the camera, I laid it horizontally in the two rests that I had arranged for it on my modified gramophone. Where the paper had been acted upon by the varying colored lights which had appeared on the disc, the prepared surface had risen in curious irregular little waves. 
I unrolled about a foot of the ribbon and attached the loose ends to an empty spool roller on the opposite side of the machine, which I had geared to the driving clockwork mechanism of the gramophone. Then, I took the diaphragm and lowered it gently into place above the ribbon. Instead of the usual needle, the diaphragm was fitted with a beautifully made metal filament brush about an inch broad, which just covered the whole breadth of the ribbon. This fine and fragile bush... Bush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah? I was about to say bush. Uh, <laughs> bu bush? bush? Yes. Bu oh, bush is cracking me up. Oh my god, where, <laughs> where was bush? I think I lost my place now. Was... This fine and fragile brush rested lightly on the prepared surface of the paper, and when I started the machine, the ribbon began to pass under the brush, <laughs> and as it passed, the delicate metal filament quote-unquote bristles followed every minute inequality of those tiny irregular wave-like excrescences <laughs> on yo, the surface. Yo, that's, that's what you get for trying to reading. flex on us with your rolled R's, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get. Yeah, you get, you get excrescence. Excres excrescences. 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 Thank you. I've never seen that word before. Yeah, it's dumb. <laughs> dumb Victorian. I put the earpieces <laughs> to my ears, and instantly I knew that I had succeeded in actually recording what Baines had heard in his sleep. In fact, I was even then hearing quote-unquote mentally, by means of his effort of memory. I was listening to what appeared to be the faint, far-off squealing and grunting of countless swine. It was extraordinary, and at the same time exquisitely horrible and vile. It frightened me, with a sense of my having come suddenly and unexpectedly too near to something foul and most abominably dangerous. So strong and imperative was this feeling that I twitched the earpieces out of my ears and sat a while staring round the room, trying to steady my sensations back to normality. Trying to think straight thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna happen. The room looked strange and vague in the dull glow of light from the circles, and I had a feeling that a taint of monstrosity was all about me in the air. Oh, a taint Just of monstrosity! Just the big yeah. straddling the whole room. <laughs> I remembered what Baines had told me of the feeling he'd always had after coming up out of quote-unquote that place, as if some horrible atmosphere had followed him up and filled his bedroom. I understood him perfectly now, so much so that I had mentally used almost his exact phrase in explaining to myself what I felt. Turning round to speak to him, I saw there was something curious about the center of the quote-unquote defense. Now, before I tell you fellows any more, must I, nope, I must explain that there are certain. Why is it so hard? Why is today why? so hard? God, why? It'll be a two-parter episode. Is this the true horror of the hog? <laughs> yeah. Now, before I tell you fellas any more, I must explain that there are certain, what I call, focusing qualities about this new defense I've been trying. The Sig Sand Manuscript puts it something like this. Avoid diversities of color, oh, nor wow. stand ye. <laughs> oh, the Sig Sand Manuscript needs to fucking go to some training. Um, um. <clears throat> Nor stand ye within the barrier of the color lights, for in color hath Satan a delight. <laughs> Nor can he abide in the deep if ye adventure against him armed with red purple. So be warned. Neither forget that in blue, which is God's color in the heavens, ye have safety. So William Hope Hodgson went to a pig farm and coincidentally that same day learned about color theory and then came home and wrote this. Yeah, I don't know. He yeah. was in a really weird place in Ohio, is my guess. Like, that's... that's <laughs> Having a fucking day is what he was having. <laughs> you see, from that statement in the Sig Sand Manuscript, I got my first notion for this new defense of mine. I have aimed to make it a defense, and yet have focusing or drawing qualities such as the Sig Sand hints at. I have experimented enormously, and I've proved that reds and purples, the two extreme colors of the spectrum, are fairly dangerous. So much so, that I suspect they actually draw, or focus, the outside forces. Any action, or meddling, 
on the part of the experimentalist is tremendously enhanced in its effect if the action is taken within barriers composed of these colors in certain proportions and tints. In the same way, blue is distinctly a general defense. Yellow appears to be neutral and green, a wonderful protection within limits. Orange, as far as I can tell, is slightly attractive and indigo is dangerous by itself in a limited way, but in certain combinations with the other colors, it becomes a very powerful defense. I've not- Slightly attractive? What the fuck? <laughs> I've not yet discovered a tenth of the possibilities of these circles of mine. It's a kind of color organ upon which I seem to play a tune of color combinations that can be either safe or infernal in its effects. Y- you know, I have a keyboard with a separate switch to each of the color circles. Karnaki really wants you to check out his new gear. Yeah, Car- Check out my new keyboard, Car- it's so fucking- Karnaki cool. is a, a, co- a noise color musician. <laughs> Well, you, you fellows will understand now what I felt when I saw the curious appearance of the floor in the middle of the defense. It looked exactly as if a circular shadow lay, not just on the floor, but a few inches above it. The shadow seemed to deepen and blacken at the center, even while I watched it. It appeared to be spreading from the center outwardly, and all the time it grew darker. I was watchful, and not a little puzzled. For the combination of lights that I had switched on approximated a moderately safe general defense. Understand, I had no intention of making a focus until I had learnt more. In fact, I meant that first investigation not to go beyond a tentative inquiry into the kind of thing I had got to deal with. I didn't know if I was ready to fuck a man in a rubber pig suit, but you know, here I am. (laughs) (laughs) No one's ever prepared when it happens. No. I knelt down quickly and felt the floor with the palm of my hand, but it was quite normal to feel, and that reassured me that there was no Saiti mischief abroad, for that is a form of danger which can involve and make use of the very material of the defense itself. It can materialize out of everything except fire. That's why As you I knelt roast there, clowns. Mm-hmm. Gotta roast them good. As I knelt there, I juicy. realized all at once that the legs of the table on which Baines lay were partly hidden in the ever-blackening shadow, and my hands seemed to grow vague as I felt at the floor. I got up and stood away a couple of feet so as to see the phenomenon from a little distance. It struck me then that there was something different about the table itself. It seemed unaccountably lower. It's the shadow hiding the legs, I thought to myself. This promises to be interesting, but I'd better not let things go too far. I called out to Baines to stop thinking so hard. Stop concentrating for a bit, I said. But he never (laughs) answered, and it occurred to me suddenly that the table appeared to be still lower. Baines! I shouted. Stop thinking a moment! Then in a flash, I realized it. Wake up, man! Wake up! Bro! Dude, you gotta get up! I cried. (laughs) (laughs) My man! The Red Sox are on! Come on! What's <laughs> God, I gotta get this guy up! <clears throat> he had fallen over asleep. The very last thing he should have done, for it increased the danger twofold. No wonder I had been getting such good results. The poor beggar was worn out with his sleepless nights. He neither moved nor spoke as I strode across to him. Bro, wake up! I shouted again, shaking him by the shoulder. The pats are on! Come on! My voice echoed uncomfortably around the big empty room, and Baines lay like a dead man. As I shook him again, I noticed that I appeared to be standing up to my knees in the circular shadow. It looked like the mouth of a pit. My legs from the knees downwards were vague. The floor under my feet felt solid and firm when I stamped on it, but all the same, I had a feeling that things were going a bit too far, so striding across to the switchboard, I switched on the full defense. Stepping back quickly to the table, I had a horrible and sickening shock. The table had sunk quite unmistakably. Its top was within a couple of feet of the floor, and the legs had that foreshortened appearance that one sees when a stick is thrust into water. They looked vague and shadowy in the peculiar circle of dark shadows which had such an extraordinary resemblance to the black mouth of a pit. I could see only the top of the table plainly with Baines lying motionless on it, and the whole thing was going down as I stared into that black circle. There was not a moment to lose, and like a flash, I caught Baines round his neck and body and lifted him clean up into my arms off the table. As I lifted him, he grunted like a great swine in my ear. Starting. The, s- the sound sent a thrill of horrible funk through me. Burnt, was- <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, he funkin'. Oh, boy. Oh, pig funk is terrible. I, I wonder when... 
I just want everyone to remember that, like, while this is happening, they're both dressed in rubber pig outfits. Just please remember that. Oh, I'm never going to forget. It was just as though I held a hog in my arms instead of a human. I nearly That's dropped him. That's the point. That's the whole point of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then I held his face to the light and stared down at him. His eyes were half open, and he was looking at me, apparently, as if he saw me perfectly. Then he grunted again. I could feel his small body quiver with the sound. I called out to him. Baines! I said, can you hear me? His eyes still gazed at me. And then, as we looked at each other, he grunted like a swine again. <laughs> and we Starting kissed. To get into no, it. I'm kidding. Starting <laughs> I'm kidding. to get into no, it. No kissing. I let go one hand and hit him across the cheek. A stinging slap. There we go, yeah. Wake up, Baines! I shouted, wake up! But I might have hit a corpse. <laughs> he just stared up at me. And suddenly, I bent lower and looked into his eyes more closely. I never saw such a fixed, intelligent, mad horror as I saw there. It knocked out all my sudden disgust. Can you understand? Can you understand how hot he was? <laughs> Ooh. I glanced round quickly at the table. It stood there, at its normal height, and indeed, it was in every way normal. The curious shadow that had somehow suggested to me the black mouth of the pit had vanished. I felt relieved. For it seemed to me that I had entirely broken up any possibility of a partial focus by means of the full defense which I had switched on. I laid Baines on the floor and stood up to look around and consider what was best to do. I dared not step outside of the barriers until any dangerous tensions there might be in the room had been dissipated. Nor was it wise, even inside the full defense, to have him sleep in the kind of sleep he was in, not without certain preparations having been made first, which I had not made. I can tell you, I felt beastly anxious. I glanced down at Baines and had a sudden fresh shock, for the peculiar circular shadow was forming all round him again, where he lay on the floor. His hands and face showed curiously vague and distorted, as they might have looked through a few inches of faintly stained water. But his eyes were somehow clear to see, they were staring up, mute and terrible at me, through that horrible, darkening shadow. I stopped, and with one quick lift, tore him up off the floor into my arms, and for the third time he grunted like a swine. There in my arms, it was damnable. <laughs> I stood up in the barrier, holding veins, and looked up out the room again, then back at the floor. The shadow was still thick round about my feet, and I stepped quickly across to the other side of the table. I stared at the shadow, and saw that it had vanished. Then I glanced down again at my feet, and had another shock, for the shadow was showing faintly again, all around where I stood. I moved the pace and watched the shadow become invisible, and then once more, like a slow stain, it began to grow about my feet. I moved again a pace and stared around the room, meditating a break for the door. And then, in that instant, I saw that this was certainly... Damn it. Ah, this would be certainly, not this would certainly be. Sorry. You're free! There ends, there ends the whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> whatever the hell that was whatever the fuck was going on <laughs> i mean it sounds like it sounds just like tenderly gazing into his pig bottom's face i mean I, him to yeah. I, yes, I hate to and... tell you this paris but there's 33 more pages of this still it has oh, not ended okay. we've only gotten through 15 so far we... i mean that's not that's okay i mean i i stopped because i fucked up chris i moved again a pace and stared around the room meditating a break for the door and then, in that instant, I saw that this would be certainly impossible, for there was something indefinite in the atmosphere of the room, something that moved, circling slowly about the barrier. I glanced down at my feet, and saw that the shadow had grown thick about them. I stepped a pace to the right, and as it disappeared, I stared again round the big room, and somehow it seemed tremendously big and unfamiliar. I wonder whether you can understand. As I stared, I saw again the indefinite something that floated in the air of the room. Tonight. Hello. <laughs> oh, Lord. I can hear it. I watched it, it steadily. Oh, I, can't <laughs> I watched it steadily for maybe a minute. It went twice completely around the barrier in that time, and suddenly I saw it more distinctly. It looked like a small puff of black smoke. And then I had something else to think about, for all at once I was aware of an extraordinary feeling of vertigo, and in the same moment a sense of sinking. I was sinking bodily. This guy just did like fucking. What's that thing you you smoke and you go through the floor? Not sage. Uh, salvia? Uh, salvia, thank you, yeah. That sounds like a bad time. 
I, everyone I've known who's done salvia describes their body sinking through the floor. Really? I literally sicken as I glance down. He vomited, bro? For I saw in that moment that I had gone down, almost up to my thighs, into what appeared to be actually the shadowy, but quite unmistakable mouth of a pit. Do you understand? I was sinking down into this thing with Banes in my arms. You mean the love you have for him? Snow Patrol! Has been developing? Yes! <laughs> yeah. It is Snow a wicked Patrol Snow Patrol moment, moment yeah. D. You are so right. A feeling of furious anger came over me. Intimidate my sub, will you? And I swung my right boot forward with a fierce kick. I kicked nothing tangible, for I went clean through the side of the shadowy thing and fetched up against the table with a crash. I had come through something that made all my skin creep and tingle. An invisible, vague something which resembled an electric tension. I felt that it, if it had become stronger, I might not have been able to charge through as I had. I wonder if I make it clear to you? I whirled around, but the beastly thing had gone, yet even as I stood there by the table, the slow graying of a circular shadow began to form again about my feet. I stepped to the other side of the table and leaned against it for a moment, for I was shaking from head to foot with a feeling of extraordinary horror upon me that was in some way different from any kind of horror I have ever felt. It was as if I had in that one moment been near something no human has any right to be near, for his soul's sake. And abruptly I wondered whether I had not felt just one brief touch of the horror that the rigid Banes was even then enduring as I held him in my arms. If I'm just here... <laughs> Outside of the barrier, there were now several of the curious little clouds. Each one looked exactly like a little puff of black smoke. They increased as I watched them, which I did for several minutes. But all the time as I watched, I kept moving from one part to another of the defense, so as to prevent the shadow forming round my feet again. Presently, I found that my constant changing of position had resolved into a slow, monotonous walk round and round inside the defense, and all the time I had to carry the unnaturally rigid body of poor Banes. <laughs> It began to tire me, for though he was small, his rigidity made him dreadfully awkward and tiring to hold, as you can understand. Yeah? Is that, yeah. Is that what made it awkward? A little, it was like a bit of a weird situation, yeah. Yet I could not think of what else to do, for I had stopped shaking him or trying to wake him for the simple reason that he was as wide awake as I was mentally, though but physically inanimate. Through one of those partial spiritual disassociations which he had tried to explain to me. Now, I had previously switched out the red, orange, yellow, and green circles and had on the full defense of the blue end of the spectrum. I knew- oh god, this is, is, this is like that one girl you know in high school is trying to sell you on fucking, like, color therapy. Oh, oh god, yeah. I knew that one of the- blue cures cancer. I knew that one of the repelling vibrations of each of the three colors, blue, indigo, and violet, were beating out protectively into the space. Ah, fuck. Oh, that got me. <laughs> You got a long way through it, though. <laughs> it was just, I don't know, something about the way it beating out protectingly into space just really trembled me up. Trembled, yeah. Yeah, wow, we're, we're it fucking is now. Fire, firing <laughs> on all cylinders today. Good God. Now I had previously switched out the red, orange, yellow, and green circles and had on the full defense of the blue end of the spectrum. I knew that one of the repelling vibrations of each of the three colors, blue, indigo, and violet, were beating out protectingly into space. Yet they were proving insufficient, and I was in the position of having either to take some desperate action to stimulate Banes to an even greater effort of yeah. will. Yeah? Oh no. Then yeah. I judged him to be making. Manu yeah? Manually stimulating Banes, are oh, we? Oh wow, yep. It's fine. Everything's fine. Or else to risk experimenting with fresh combinations of the defensive colors. You see, as things were at that moment, the danger was increasing steadily, but plainly from the appearance of the air of the room outside the barrier, there were some mighty dangerous tensions generating. While inside the danger was also increasing, the steady recurrence of the shadow proving that the defense was insufficient. In short, I feared that Baines in his peculiar condition was literally a doorway into the defense. And unless I could wake him or find out the correct combinations of circles necessary to set up stronger repelling vibrations against that particular danger, there were very ugly possibilities ahead. I felt I had been incredibly rash not to have foreseen the possibility of Banes falling asleep under the hypnotic effect of deliberately paralleling the associations of sleep. Unless I could increase the repulsion of the barriers or wake him there was very... There was every likely... Fuck. 
<laughs> no, no. Uh. Unless I could increase the repulsion of the barriers or wake him, there was every likelihood of his having to nope of having to choose. <laughs> oh no! Oh, fuck God me. damn it! Uh, I believe in you, Paris. <sighs> okay, all right. Going, going to my knack, my knack place. <clears throat> Unless I could increase the repulsion of the barriers or wake him, there was every likelihood of having a choose between a rush for the door, which the condition of the atmosphere outside the barrier showed to be practically impossible, or of throwing him outside the barrier, which of course was equally not possible. All this time, I was walking around and round inside the barrier when suddenly, I saw a new development of the danger which threatened us. Right in the center of the defense, the shadow had formed into an intensely black circle, about a foot wide. This increased as I looked at it. It was horrible to see it grow. It crept out in an ever-widening circle till it was quite a yard across. Quickly, I put Baines on the floor. A tremendous attempt was evidently going to be made by some outside force to enter the defense, and it was up to me to make a final effort to help Baines to wake up. I took out my lancet and pushed up his left coat sleeve. Here's the blood play I predicted earlier. <laughs> Here we go. What I was going to do was a terrible risk, I knew, for there is no doubt that in some extraordinary fashion, blood attracts. The Sixth Sand mentions it particularly in one passage, which runs something like this. In blood, there is the voice which calleth through all space, ye monsters and ye deep hear, and hearing they lust. <laughs> you know, likewise, it's irre hath, irregular stuff. <laughs> hath it a greater power to reclaim back with ye soul that doth wander foolish and drift from ye body, in which it doth have natural abiding. But woe unto him that doth spill ye blood in ye deadly hour, for there will surely monsters that shall hear ye blood cry. You know, yada yada. That risk I had to run. I knew. That's my favorite part of Bloodborne. Yeah. I kn Is when Karnaki puts a guy in rubber and holds him. Yeah, where's that boss fight? I missed that. Wow. Is that in Yarnum? Or under Yarnum? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Ken is like, you better not all understand that reference. <laughs> I knew that the blood would call to the outer forces, but equally, I knew that it should call even more loudly to that portion of Bane's essence that was adrift from him, down in those depths. Before lancing him, I glanced at the shadow. It had spread out until the nearest edge was not more than two feet away from Bane's right shoulder, and the edge was creeping nearer, like the blackening edge of burning paper, even when I stared. The whole thing had a less shadowy, less ghostly appearance than at any time before, and it looked simply and literally like the black mouth of a pit. Now, Baines, I said, pull yourself together, man. Wake up. And at the same time as I spoke to him, I used my lancet quickly, but superficially. I watched a little red spot of blood well up, then trickle down his wrist. Damn it, that's round his wrist. Fuck! <laughs> God, oh, God. Damn it. <laughs> well, because I was thinking about making a joke about him, like, taking his dick out when the blood came out. So I think I just I fucked myself up there. Shouldn't have thought about jokes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Told you guys, we got a lot of jokes out of the room. We're going to get through this. I know. Guys, joke, guys, get jokes out of here. We're all in terrible form tonight, really. Uh, yeah, this here. is the the horrendous. Where? We're getting hogged over here. That's what I'm going to call no. it. Whenever we're having a bad time, it's going to be called getting hogged. No! <laughs> I watched the little red spot of blood well up, then trickle round his wrist and fall to the floor of the defense. <laughs> it's in quotes. And in the moment that it fell, the thing that I feared happened. There was a sound like a low peal of thunder in the room, and curious, deadly-looking flashes of light rippled here and there along the floor outside the barrier. Once more I called to him, trying to speak firmly and steadily as I saw that the horrible shadowy circle had spread across every inch of the floor space of the center of the defense. Oh, I'm sorry, the defense, making it appear as if both Baines and I were suspended above an unutterable black void. The black void that stared up at me out of the throat of that shadowy pit. And yet, all the time I could feel the floor solid under my knees as I knelt beside Baines, holding his wrist. Baines, I called once more, trying not to shout madly at him. Baines, wake up! Wake up, man, wake up! <laughs> but he never moved, only stared up at me with eyes of quiet horror. 
that seemed to be looking at me out of some dreadful eternity. By this time, the shadow had blackened all around us, and I felt that strangely terrible vertigo coming over me again. Jumping to my feet, I caught up Banes in my arms and stepped over the first of the protective circles, the violet, and stood between it and the indigo circle, holding Banes as close to me as possible so as to prevent any portion of his helpless body from <laughs> protruding outside the indigo and blue circles. From the black shadowy mouth, what that mouth do, which now filled the whole of the center of that defense, oh, I'm sorry, of the defense, there came a faint sound, not near, but seeming to come up at me out of unknown abysses. Very, very faint and lost it sounded, but I recognized it as unmistakably the infinitely remote murmur of countless swine. And that same moment, Bane, as if answering the sound, grunted like a swine in my arms. There I stood between the glass vacuum tubes of the circles, gazing dizzily into that black shadowy pit mouth, which seemed to drop sheer into hell from below my left okay. elbow. Things had gone so utterly beyond all that I had thought of, and it had all somehow come about so gradually and yet so suddenly, that I was really a bit below my natural self. I felt mentally paralyzed, and could think of nothing except that not twenty feet away was the door and the outer natural world, and here was I, face to face, some unthought of danger, and all adrift, what to do to avoid it. Alright, he's- alright, he's like this every time something happens. <laughs> like, like a guy cooks dinner and he's like, I'm mentally paralyzed. <laughs> I've never been this way before. What is this? Alfredo <laughs> sauce. <laughs> I'm Alfred. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wow, amazing! That's a good one. That was really good. That Holy was shit! Really good. Wow. Ten points to D. Ten points to D. Thank you. You fellows will understand this better when I tell you that the bluish glare from the three circles showed me that there were now hundreds and hundreds of small smoke-like puffs of black cloud circling round and round outside the barrier in an unvarying, unending procession. And all the time I was holding the rigid body of Banes in my arms, trying not to give way to the loathing that got me each time he grunted. Every 20 or 30 seconds he grunted, as if in answer to the sounds which were almost too faint for my normal hearing. Okay? My hearing is very okay. normal. It's extremely it's normal. normal. Like you, like your hearing, normal, I can tell you. It was like holding something worse than a corpse in my arms. Standing there balanced between physical death on the one side, and soul destruction on the other. Abruptly, from out of that deep that lay so close that my elbow and shoulder overhung it, there came again a hint. Marvelously faint murmur of swine. So utterly far away that the sound was as remote as a lost echo. Baines answered it with a big leg -like squeal that set every fiber in me protesting in sheer human revolt. I thought I wanted a pig bottom, but I didn't. <laughs> and I sweated coldly from head to foot. Ugh. Pulling myself together, I tried to pierce down into the mouth of the Great Shadow when, for the second time, a low peal of thunder, wrong peal, sounded in the room, and every joint in my body seemed to jolt and burn. In turning to look down the pit, I had allowed one of Bane's heels to protrude for a moment slightly beyond the blue circle, and a fraction of the tension outside the barrier had evidently evident ah oh, fuck oh, damn it god oh it's the dumbest shit that's getting me today <laughs> the discharging of that tension that really gets it gets us all mm. yeah you know I, I was getting lost in the romance <laughs> and a fraction of the tension outside the barrier had evidently discharged through banes in me had I been standing directly inside the defense instead of being insulated from it by the violet circle then no doubt things might have been much more serious. As it was, I had, psychically, that dreadful soiled feeling, which the healthy oh. human always experiences <laughs> oh, when he comes boy. too closely in contact with certain outer monstrosities. Oh no, he done did a pee pee. <laughs> Good thing the room is rubber. Do you fellows remember how I had just the same feeling when the hand came too near me in the gateway case? Read all about no, it in Karnaki the Ghostfinder in the end of the game. <laughs> nope, don't remember. No idea. Fuck off. The gateway of the monster, the one with the ring with a magical hand coming out of it. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember, nice. but I don't remember him being any more scared than normal. Yeah. Mm. I don't remember him going going pe going pants piddle about yeah, it. Yeah, like, I, I don't remember that either, so... The physical effects were sufficiently interesting to mention, but Bane's left boot had been ripped open, and the leg of his trousers was charred to the knee, while all around the leg were numbers of bluish marks in the form of uh. irregular spirals. Uh. Oh my god, he's a spiral ham! <laughs> oh. oh my god, oh my god! And, and no. wait, he just got roasted in the pit? Where the clown was probably roasted. Oh my god, they're, they're doing all... a barbecue. This is Hell's it's Own Barbecue. Hell's Barbecue. He's pulling it all together. The next line it's, is. It's like oh. the clip show Karnacki thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I stood there holding Baines and shaking from head to foot. My head ached, and each joint had a queer, numbish feeling. But my physical pains were nothing compared with my mental distress. I felt that we were done. It's over. <laughs> it's over! I had no room to turn or move for the space between the violet circle, which was the innermost, and the blue circle, which was the outermost of those in use, was 31 inches, including the one inch of the indigo circle. So you see, I was forced to stand there like an image, fearing each moment lest I should get another shock, and quite unable to think what to do. Do you think next he's going to be like, oh my god, there's a sweet smelling brown sauce coming up? <laughs> ah, what do I do? I'm being marinated. <laughs> Slices of pineapple slapped on me left and right. <laughs> ah, plop, plop, plop. No, it's so acidic. <laughs> I dare say five minutes passed in this fashion. Baines had not grunted once since the tension caught him, and for this I was just simply thankful. Though at first, I must confess, I had feared for a moment that he was dead. No further sounds had come up out of the black mouth to my left, and I grew steady enough again to begin to look about me and think a bit. I leant again so as to look directly down into the shadowy pit. The edge of the circular mouth was now quite defined and had a curious solid look, as if it were formed out of some substance like black glass. Below the edge, I could trace the appearance of solidity for a considerable distance, though in a vague sort of way. The center of this extraordinary phenomenon was simple and unmitigated blackness. An utter velvety blackness that seemed to soak the very light out of the room down into it. I could see nothing else, and if anything else came out of it except a complete silence, it was the atmosphere of frightening suggestion that was affecting me more and more every minute. I turned away slowly and carefully, so as not to run any risk of allowing either Baines or myself to expose any part of us over the blue circle. Then I saw that things outside of the blue circle had developed considerably, and the odd black puffs of smoke-like cloud had increased enormously and blent into a great gloomy circular wall of tufted cloud. Wow, Chris, ten points to you for blent. That was I would have I would have I would have wow. fucked. Wow, yeah, you got, I got that. Fucked on that. Going round and round and round eternally, and hiding the rest of the room entirely from me. Perhaps a minute passed while I stared at this thing, and then, you know, the room was shaken slightly. This shaking lasted for three or four seconds, and then passed. But it came again in about half a minute, and was repeated from time to time. There was a queer, oscillating quality in the shaking that made me think suddenly of the Jarvie haunting case, you remember? You could also read that in the oh, Haunting Jarvie! Jarvie with <laughs> the Ghostfinder! <laughs> Wow, I can't believe this is the last story oh, he wrote. Yeah, I'm so surprised. <laughs> so it's like, got all these callbacks, you know? There came again the shaking, and a ripple of deadly light seemed to play around the outside of the barrier, and then abruptly the room was full of a strange roaring, a brutish, enormous yelling, grunting storm of swine sounds. They fell away into a complete silence, and the rigid banes grunted twice in my arms, as if answering. Then the storm of swine noise came again, beating up in a gigantic riot of brute sound that roared through the room, piping, squealing, grunting, and howling. And as it sank with a steady declination, there came a single gargantuan grunt out of some dreadful throat of monstrousness, and in one beat the crashing chorus of unknown millions of swine came thundering and raging through the room again. There was more in that sound than mere chaos, 
There was a mighty devilish rhythm in it. Suddenly it swept down again into a multitudinous swinish whispering and minor <laughs> gruntings of unthinkable millions. Woo, wow. Nice work. And then with a rolling, deafening bellow of sound came the single vast grunt. And as if lifted upon it, the swine roar of the millions of the beasts beat up through the room again. And at every seventh second, as I knew well enough without the need of the watch on my wrist, came the single storm beat of the great grunt out of the throat of unknowable monstrosity. And in my arms, Banes the human grunted in time to the swine melody, a rigid grunting monster there in my two arms. This is so fucking weird. This is so I'm gonna have to put in so many fucking pig swine grunts in this. Oh god, the audio editing. I tell you, from head to foot, I shook and sweated. I believe I prayed, but if I did, I don't know what I prayed. I have never before felt or endured just what I felt standing there in that 31 inch space. I gotta tell you how big it is all the time. (laughs) With that grunting thing in my arms. (laughs) You're never gonna take me seriously. Unless I tell you exactly how big it is. And the hell melody beating up out of the great deeps. And to my right. <laughs> Please, the, the, the hellity, thank you. Oh my god, I can't even play fucking I'm a Hour over Karnakis. Tensions that would have torn me into a bundle of blazing tattered flesh if I had jumped out over the barriers. And then, with an effect like a clap of unexpected thunder, the vast storm of sound ceased, and the room was full of silence and an unimaginable horror. This silence continued. I want to say something which may sound a bit silly, but the silence seemed to trickle around the room. I don't know why I felt it like that, but my words give you just what I seemed to feel as I stood there holding the softly grunting body of Banes. (laughs) The circular, gloomy wall of dense black cloud enclosed the barrier as completely as ever and moved round and round and round with a slow, eternal movement. And at the back of that black wall of a circling cloud, a dead silence went trickling round the room, out of my sight. Do you understand at all? It seemed to me to show very clearly the state of almost insane mental and psychic tension I was enduring. The way in which my brain insisted that the silence was trickling round the room interests me enormously, for I was either in a state of approximating a phase of madness, or else I was, psychically tuned to some abnormal pitch of awareness and sensitiveness in which silence had ceased to be an abstract quality and had become to me a definite concrete element, much as, to use a stupidly crude illustration, the invisible moisture of the atmosphere became a visible and concrete element when it becomes deposited as water. I wonder whether this thought attracts you as it does me. You into this? (laughs) <laughs> you fucking feel you into this? this? You, in, you into this really? liquid hell sound? Because it's like the newest thing. It's cool. Dude, dude the EP from Liquid Hell Sound? <laughs> Unbelievable. So good. Very good. And then, you know, a slow awareness grew in me of some further horror to come. This sensation or knowledge or whatever it should be named was so strong that I had a sudden feeling of suffocation. I felt that I could bear... No breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give a fuck if I cut my hog squealing. <laughs> and then, okay, wait, uh, yeah. Hey, no, Chris, it's gonna be wicked easy, but can you edit in hog squealing to the tune of those? Yes. I'm I'm kidding. That's so much work. I felt that I could bear no more, and that if anything else happened, I should just pull out my revolver and shoot Bane through the head, and what? then myself. <laughs> Holy wait, shit! Don't wait, do that. What? Wait, this is now the the Karnaki snuff story. Like, what the what? fuck? Karnaki's like, I give up. This is fucking weird. No. Wow. <laughs> is that how the other guy died? <laughs> And is that why Karnaki was so. like, yeah, it was a very good thing, actually, that he died, coincidentally, while I was working <laughs> on this game. Uh, Karnaki's a... S- Karnaki mm-hmm. can't handle how gay he is, so he kills people. That's sad. God. Yeah, real real talk. Awesome that he died, personally. If you ask me, <laughs> I yes. think it's good. <laughs> and then myself. And so end the whole dreadful business. This feeling, however, soon passed. God, Karnaki's literally like, this sucks. I, oh, fuck, man. I do have a gun. (laughs) He's thinking about it, man. And I felt stronger and more ready to face things again. Also, I had the first, though still indefinite, idea of a way in which to make things a bit safer. I was too dazed to see how to shape to help myself efficiently. 
And then a low, far-off whining stole up into the room, and I knew that the danger was coming. I leant slowly to my left, taking care not to let Bane's feet stick over the blue circle, and stared down into the blackness of the pit that dropped sheer into some unknown from under my left elbow. A whining died, but far down in the blackness there was something, just a remote, luminous spot. I stood in a grim silence for maybe ten long minutes and looked down at the thing. It was increasing in size all the time and had become much plainer to see, yet was still lost in the far tremendous deep. Then, as I stood and looked, the low whining sound crept up to me again, and Baines, who had lain like a log in my arms all the time, answered it with a long animal-like whine that was somehow newly abominable. A very curious thing happened then, for all around the edge of the pit, that looked so peculiarly like black glass, there came a sudden luminous glowing. It came and went oddly, smoldering queerly round and round the edge in an opposite direction to the circling of the wall of black tufted cloud on the outside of the barrier. There's so much queer smoldering in fanfiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of queer smoldering. This peculiar glowing finally disappeared, and abruptly, out of the tremendous deep, I was conscious of a dreadful quality or atmosphere of monstrousness that was coming up out of the pit. If I said there had been a sudden waft of it, this would very well describe the actuality of it, but the spiritual sickness of distress that it caused me to feel I am simply stumped to explain to you. It was something that made me feel I should be soiled to the very core of me. If I did not beat it off from me with my will... Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah that was a lot. <laughs> it's extremely normal. I leant sharply away from the pit towards the outer of the burning circles. I meant to see that no part of my body should overhang the pit whilst the disgusting power was beating up of the unknown depths. And thus it was. Facing so rigidly away from the center of the defense, I saw presently a fresh thing. For there was something, many things, I began to think on the other side of the gloomy wall that moved everlastingly around the outside of the barrier. The first thing I noticed was a queer disturbance of the ever-circling cloud wall. This disturbance was within 18 inches of the floor and directly before me. There was a curious puddling action in the misty wall, as if something were meddling with it. The area of this peculiar little disturbance could not have been more than a foot across, and it did not remain opposite to me, but was taken round by the circling of the wall. When it came past me again, I noticed that it was bulging slightly inwards towards me. And as it moved away from me once more, I saw another similar disturbance, and then a third and a fourth, all in different parts of the slowly whirling black wall, and all of them were no more than about 18 inches from the floor. Wait, did the wall just grow a bunch of yes. dicks? Uh, I think so. Yes. I believe it did. When the first one came opposite me again, I saw that the slight bulge had grown into a very distinct protuberance towards me. Oh. <laughs> you have to be, okay, come okay. on. Karnaki is fucking with us from the beyond the grave. This, I, I can't, I have no words. It's, I can't, uh, the, the wall just became turgid. Yeah, just that one Slenderman fanfiction again. It, it's just that one Slenderman fanfiction again. All around the moving wall, there had now come those curious swellings. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's what I say, that's what I say at the club. I'm like, hey, ladies, I think I feel a curious <laughs> swelling coming on. <laughs> they continued to reach inwards and to elongate, and oh, all the time uh -huh. they kept in a constant movement. Uh, dude, uh, I... Uh -huh. Oh, my God, he's just in the fucking sex machine wall. Like, what's yeah, Suddenly... One of them broke or opened at the apex. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No! And there protruded through for an instant the tip of a pallid but unmistakable snout. Okay, we're watching an otherworldly dick wall give birth to this, a pig. That's what's happening right now. This is now. just the new Hellraiser, right? Yeah, it must be Hellraiser 9. Yeah, this is this is the new Hellraiser. Yeah, oh my god, Ken, thank you. This is viral marketing. Listen, he thinks it's a snout, but it's it's just it's just an uncut dick. That's all this is. It was gone at once, <laughs> but I had seen the thing distinctly, and within a minute, I saw another one poke suddenly through the wall to my right and withdraw as quickly. I could not look at the base of the strange black moving circle about the barrier without seeing a swinish snout peep through momentarily in this place or that. All right, I'm just gonna say it. This, this is, is scary. <laughs> this is now scary. Is, is it? it though? Yeah, I would be freaked out if I was trapped in a rubber room in a rubber pig suit 
with a bunch of weird rainbow vacuums and then like dicks appeared on the walls and then pigs came out of those dicks. I feel like okay, that's I'm all I'm picturing it scary. as a film before my <laughs> eyes and this is not a horror film that has me like scurrying into the corner. This is a horror film that I'm like calling up all my friends being like, we have to watch this now and make a drinking <laughs> I need to, game. I want to watch this right yeah, fucking this now. Pretty weird. It's pretty weird. I stared at these things in a very peculiar state of mind. There was so great a weight of the abnormal about me before and behind in every way that to a certain extent it bred in me a sort of antidote to fear. So I, the pigs bred in him? The words that he's him? using are not accidental. The pigs bred this in cannot him. cannot be accidental. Can you understand? Wink, wink, nudge, oh, nudge. Oh, yes. All too well, Karnaki. Yeah, do I, I think understand. so, Karnaki. Yeah. I think we get it. It produced in me a temporary dazedness in which things and the horror of things became less real. I stared at them as a child stares out from a fast train at a quickly passing night landscape, oddly hit by the furnaces of unknown industries. I want you to try to understand. In my arms, veins lay quiet and rigid, and my arms and back ached until I was one dull ache in all my body. But I was only partly conscious of this when I aroused momentarily from my psychic to my physical awareness, to shift him to another position, less intolerable temporarily to my tired arms and back. There was suddenly a fresh thing. A low but enormous solitary grunt came rolling vast and brutal into the room. It made the still body of Baines quiver against me, and he grunted thrice in return with the voice of a young pig. Oh boy. Oh, I, he's, he's young a young now. pig, all right. I know we locked jokes out of the room an hour ago, but I don't know if we can ever let jokes back in. I think jokes died <laughs> in that room. <laughs> yeah, I think they may have. Jokes may have died forever. I can't believe, guys, I can't believe it, but like RIP to yeah. jokes, it's gone. It's over. High up in the moving wall of the barrier, I saw fluffing out of the black tufted clouds and a pig's hoof and leg, as far as the knuckle, <laughs> came through and pawed uh, a moment. Uh, <laughs> Just a pig going, hey! <laughs> This was about hey. nine or ten feet above the floor. As it gradually disappeared, I heard a low grunting from the other side of the veil of clouds, which broke out suddenly into a diaphan. 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 I don't know what that word means. What? All right. All right. Does, Fucking. Does that count hacking, as a mix-up? Hacking the dark web. Googling that now. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Come on. Get. Let's get into the dark web by cheese sandwich. <laughs> does, does that count as a mess up? No, no, no. cuz it's fucking diaphan. What? No, yeah, that's like it's cuz it's made of fucking word. No, you Chris, you <laughs> like, I think you pronounced it roughly correctly and it didn't actually stop the flow. We just hey. paused. Yeah, no, yeah, we stopped. Fun it. fact. The first result is <laughs> The Hog by William Hope Hodgson. Oh, <laughs> of course. Of course it is. It's the only it's result. The only result. It's the only place well, there's that actually this word appears. There's a foot, what the fuck? 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 Probably. Okay, I'm seeing one person on, suggest that it's a yeah, misprint. Sorry, the note, the footnote in the text says probably a misprint. Di- diapason seems the correct word, which would make sense since this is a sonic reference. Uh, expected here. Diapason. Diapason. An organ stops okay. sounding a main register of flue pipes, typically of an eight foot pitch. Or a grand swelling burst of harmony. Mm. Uh, okay. You know, a- as a musician, I've never heard that word before. Naming my next Dungeons and Dragons character, Diaphaeon. Yeah. Diaphaeon is a cool name. Diaphaeon forever. Of brute sound, grunting, squealing, and swine howling all formed into a sound that was the essential melody of the brute. A grunting, squealing, howling roar that rose, roar by roar, howl by howl, and squeal by squeal to a crescendo of horrors. The bestial gross, longing zests and acts of some grotto of hell. It is no use. I can't give it to you. I get dumb with the failure of my command over speech to tell you what that grunting, howling, roaring melody conveyed to me. It had in it something so inexplicably below the horizons of the soul and its monstrousness and fearfulness that the ordinary simple fear of death itself, with all its attendant agonies and terrors and sorrows, seemed like a thought of something peaceful and infinitely holy compared with the fear of those unknown elements in that dreadful roar and melody. And the sound was with me inside the room, there right in the room with me. 
Yet I seemed not to be aware of confining walls, but of echoing space of gargantuan corridors. Curious! I had in my mind those two words, gargantuan corridors. At this point, I'm almost certain that this story was the direct inspiration for the Warrens in Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, I, I'm i getting that, and I'm also, like, if that's the case, then I'm really impressed. Yeah, they made it scary, yeah. <laughs> As the rolling chaos of swine melody beat itself away on every side, there came booming through it a single grunt, a single recurring grunt of the hog. For I knew now that I was actually, and without any doubt, hearing the beat of monstrosity. The hog. In the sixth hand, the thing is described something like this. Ye hog which ye almighty alone hath power upon. If in sleep, or in ye hour of danger, ye hear the voice of ye hog, cease ye to meddle. For ye hog doth be of ye outer monstrous ones. Nor shall any human come nigh him, nor continue meddling when ye hear his voice. For in ye earlier life upon the world did the hog have power, and shall again in ye end. And in that ye hog had once a power upon ye earth, so doth he crave store to come again. And dreadful shall be ye harm to ye soul, if ye continue to ye meddle, and to ye let ye beast ye come ye nigh. And I ye say ye unto ye all, if ye have brought this ye dire ye danger upon ye, have ye memory of ye cross, for all of ye all sign ye hath ye hog a horror. Let's, hang on, hang on. <coughs> ye we gotta, hog. We gotta, we gotta have a clap break. That was fucking. That I, was truly something. I have never seen so many yees, yees red in sequence, Chris. Amazing okay, job. Well, it was a, that was a, a lot veritable of yee. diaphaeon of yees. <laughs> Yeah, that was some that was Kanye oh, West. Wow. Level. Wow. <laughs> to, to ye listener, I Sorry. added some yees. Oh, there's so many A yees. couple. Here and there. Now and again. Actually not that yeah. many though. Actually not yeah, that I was many though. Say, like I was not as many as the yeah, listener I was wants. Reading along. That was those that was ninety percent true ye. There's a lot more, but I can't remember it all, and that is about the substance of it. <laughs> There was I holding Baines, who was all the time howling that dreadful grunt out with the voice of a swine. I wonder if I didn't go mad. I didn't... There was no if in there. Fuck. Oh. After all that, yes. that's what got you? Oh, it's always I'm so something sorry. simple. I'm so it's sorry. always something small and simple. A word added or subtracted. Mm -hmm. It's because you're exhausted from like yes. everything you yeah, just did. Yeah, it is like... fucking exhausting to read all those goddamn yees. It was, I believe, the antidote of dazedness produced by the strain which helped me through each moment. A minute later, or perhaps five minutes, I had a sudden new sensation, like a warning cutting through my dulled feelings. I turned my head, but there was nothing behind me, and bending over to my left I seemed to be looking down into that black depth which fell away sheer under my left elbow. At that moment the roaring bellow of the swine noise ceased, and I seemed to be staring down into miles of black aether at something that hung there, a pallid face floating far down and remote, a great swine face. Did this also inspire Lord of the Flies? Yeah, sure. Everything. It inspired everything. <laughs> Probably. I don't know, like, I think Lord of the Fries... <laughs> the fries. Lord, Lord of the, of the Fries! fries. Hey. Hey, hot, hot topic. I'll fucking f split you 50-50 for that t-shirt. <laughs> Was there a second half to that sentence, too, or did we peter out at Lord of the Fries? I think, we, I think we're done. I think... It's just that that was it. I, I completely... I was thinking so much about marketing that that I fucking forgot what I was saying. <laughs> and as I gazed, I saw it grow bigger. Yeah. A seemingly motionless, pallid swine face rising upward out of the depth, and suddenly I realized that I was actually looking at the capital H hog. Karnaki likes to stare hogs right down the barrel. Yeah, what's up with what's up with the proper noun hog? Um, ye hog. It's the hog of ye sig sand Le ye hogue. manuscript ye, I believe. It's ye hog. It is the hell yeah. hog. 
For perhaps a full minute I stared down through the darkness at that thing swimming like some far-off dead white planet in the stupendous void. And then I simply woke up bang, as you might say, to the possession of my faculties. For just a certain over-degree of strain had brought about the dumbly helpful anesthesia of dazedness. So this sudden underwhelming- nope, overwhelming. Oh, Fuck. Oh god, Fuck. this story is never gonna oh. be over. <clears throat> <laughs> but just a certain over degree of strain had brought about the dumbly helpful anesthesia of dazedness so the sudden overwhelming supreme fact of horror produced in turn its reaction from inertness to action I passed in one moment from listlessness to a fierce efficiency I knew that I had through some accident penetrated beyond all previous bounds and that I stood yeah where no human soul had any right to be, and that in but a few of the puny minutes of Earth's time, I might be dead. Whether Banes had passed beyond the lines of retraction or not, I could not tell. I put him down carefully, but quickly, on his side, between the inner circles, that is, the violet circle and the indigo circle, where he lay, grunting, slowly. Feeling that the dreadful moment had come, I drew out my automatic... <laughs> Shit. Oh no, oh god, he's gonna kill himself! It seemed best to make sure of our end before that thing in the depth came any nearer. For once Baines in his present condition came within what I might term the inductive forces of the monster, he would cease to be human. There would happen, as in that case of Asta, who stayed outside the pentacles in the Black Veil case, what can only be described as a pathological spiritual change. Literally. In other Every words. time he brings up how Asta fucking died. Soul destruction. Dude, guys, I thought Black Veil Case's last <laughs> album was like not good. <laughs> Too many pig squeals. Too many pig squeals. <laughs> Too many pig squeals, yeah. And then something seemed to be telling me not to shoot. This sounds rips a bit superstitious. <laughs> yeah, it's just a guy. But I meant. <laughs> Fucking guys, like, oh, shit. <laughs> this sounds perhaps a bit superstitious, but I meant to kill Baines in that moment. And what's. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I never fucking believe that I was gonna shoot that motherfucker. And what stopped me was a distinct <laughs> message from the outside. Yeah, somebody knocked on the door and was like, Karnak, you don't kill another guy! <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot Listen, him in I know the, the roleplay gets really intense, but you gotta calm down. You have to relax. <laughs> He's lost. I tell ya, it sent a great thrill of hope through me, for I knew that the forces which govern the spinning of the outer circle were intervening. But the very fact of the intervention proved to me afresh the enormous spiritual peril into which we had stumbled. For that inscrutable protective force only intervenes between the human soul and the outer monstrosities. The moment I received that message, I stood up like a flash and turned towards the pit, stepping over the violet circle slap into the mouth of darkness. I had to take the risk in order to get at the switchboard, which lay on the glass shelf under the tabletop in the center. I could not shake free from the horror of the idea that I might fall down through that awful blackness. The floor felt solid enough under me, but I seemed to be walking on nothing above a black void, like an inverted starless night with the face of the approaching hog rising up from far down under my feet. A silent, incredible thing out of the abyss, a pallid, floating swine face framed in enormous blackness. Two quick, nervous strides took me to the table standing there in the center, with its glass legs apparently resting on nothing. I grabbed out the switchboard, sliding out the vulcanite plate, which carried the switch control of the blue circle. The battery which fed this circle was the right-hand one of the row of seven, and each battery was marked with the letter of its circle painted on it, so that in an emergency I could select any particular battery in a moment. As I snatched up the B-switch, I had a grim enough warning of the unknown dangers that I was risking in that short journey of two steps, for that dreadful sense of vertigo returned suddenly, and for one horrible moment, I saw everything through a blurred medium, as if I were trying to look through water. Below me, far away down between my feet, I could see the hog, which in some peculiar way looked different, dearer and much nearer, and enormous. I felt it had gotten nearer to me all in a moment, and suddenly... I had the impression I was descending bodily. I had a sense of a tremendous force being used to push me over the side of that pit, but with every shred of willpower I had in me, I hurled myself into that smoky appearance that hid everything, 
and reached the violet circle where Baines lay in front of me. Here I crouched down on my heels, and with my two arms out before me, I slipped the nails of each forefinger under the vulcanite base of the blue circle, which I lifted very gently, so that when the base was far enough from the floor, I could push the tips of my fingers underneath. I took care to keep from reaching farther under the inner edge of the glowing tube, which rested on the two-inch broad foundation of vulcanite. Man, nothing really kills the tension like all this fucking detailed finger battery shit. God. (laughs) (sighs) Very slowly, I stood upright, lifting the side of the blue circle with me. My feet were between the indigo and the violet circles, and only the blue circle between me and sudden death. For if it had snapped with the unusual strain I was putting upon it by lifting it like that, I knew that I should in all probability go west pretty quickly. So you fellows can imagine what I felt like. I was conscious of a disagreeable faint prickling that was strongest in the tips of my fingers and wrists, and the blue circle seemed to vibrate strangely, as if minute particles of something were impinging upon it in countless millions. Along the shining glass tubes for a couple of feet on each side of my hands, a queer haze of tiny sparks boiled and whirled in the form of an extraordinary halo. Stepping forward over the indigo circle, I pushed the blue circle out against the slowly moving wall of black cloud, causing a ripple of tiny pale flashes to curl in over the circle. These flashes ran along the vacuum tube until they came to the place where the blue circle crossed the indigo, and there they flicked off into space with sharp cracks of sound. As I advanced slowly and carefully with the blue circle, a most extraordinary thing happened. For the moving wall of cloud gave from it in a great belly of shadow and appeared to thin away from before it. Lower in my edge of the circle to the floor, I stepped over Baines and right into the mouth of the pit, lifting the other side of the circle over the table. It creaked as if it were about to break in half as I lifted it, but eventually it came over safe. When I looked again into the depth of that shadow, I saw below me the dreadful pallid head of the hog floating in a circle of night. It struck me that it glowed very slightly, just a vague luminosity, and quite near, comparatively. No one could have judged distances in that black void. Picking up the edge of the blue circle again, as I had done before, I took it out further until it was half clear of the indigo circle. Then I picked up Baines and carried him to that portion of the floor guarded by the part of the blue circle, which was clear of the defense. Then I lifted the circle and started to move it forward as quickly as I did, shivering each time the joints squeaked as the whole fabric of it groaned with the strain I was putting on it. And all the time, the moving wall of tufted clouds gave from the edge of the blue circle, bellying away from it in a marvelous fashion as if blown by an unheard wind. Simply marvelous. You know, things... Things were getting Fantastic. pretty fun. Like, we were about to murder someone, and then he was like, you know what, I'm gonna, in excruciating detail, tell you how I'm moving this plate around the room. How about that? Whoa, I, he could, like, I was actually getting, like, pretty sucked into the, like, wow, the, the head of this monstrous hog has appeared from the floor. But, like, he's taking so long that I'm, like, looking at my watch, and I'm just like, is he doing all this while the hog yes, is just, like, I think so. <laughs> like, You're gonna, um, hey, you, you gonna do anything? Uh, okay. All right, I'll wait. You're gonna... Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait. wait. I'll <laughs> wait to emerge from hell. It's fine. It's cool. Take your time. When I looked again into the depth of that shadow, I saw below me the dreadful, pallid head of the hog floating in a circle of night. It struck me... Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I somehow went back a page? Oh, no. Whoops. Sorry about that. I just... I know I just read that, so... Well, I guess I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. no, now I have to stop reading. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> okay. From time to time, little flashes of light had begun to flick in over the blue circle, and I began to wonder whether it would be able to hold out the tension until I had dragged it clear of the defense. Once it was clear, I hoped the abnormal stress would cease from about us and concentrate chiefly around the defense again and the attractions of the negative tension. Just then, I heard a sharp tap behind me, and the blue circle jarred somewhat, having now ridden completely over the violet and indigo circles. Learning colors with Karnaki, I love it, and dropped clear onto the floor. At the same instant, there came a low, rolling noise as of thunder, and a curious roaring. The black circling wall had thinned away from around us, and the room showed clearly once more, yet nothing was to be seen except that now and then a peculiar bluish flicker of light would ripple across the floor. 
Turning to look at the defense, I noticed it was surrounded by the circling wall of black cloud and looked strangely extraordinary seen from the outside. It resembled a slightly swaying squat funnel of whirling black mist reaching from the floor to the ceiling, and through it I could see glowing, sometimes vague and sometimes plain, the indigo and violet circles. And then as I watched, the whole room seemed suddenly filled with an awful presence which pressed upon me with a weight of horror that was the very essence of spiritual deathliness. Kneeling there in the blue circle by Baines, my initiative faculties stupefied and temporarily paralyzed, I could form no further plan of escape, and indeed I seemed to care for nothing at the moment. I felt I had already escaped from immediate destruction, and I was strung up to an amazing pitch of indifference to any minor horrors. Baines all this while had been quietly lying on his side. I rolled him over and looked closely at his eyes, taking care on account of his condition not to gaze into them, because otherwise I'd fall in love. <laughs> For if he had passed beyond the line of retraction, he would be dangerous. It's dangerous to fall oh, in yeah. love. I mean, if the wandering part of his essence had been assimilated by the hog, then Baines would be spiritually accessible and might be even then no more than the outer form of the man, charged with the radiation of the monstrous ego of the <laughs> hog, and therefore capable of what I might term, for want of a more exact phrase, a psychically infective force such force being more readily transmitted through the eyes than any other way, and capable of producing a brainstorm of an extremely dangerous character. Huh. I found Baines, however, with both eyes with an extraordinary distressed interned quality. Not the eyeballs, remember, but a reflex action transmitted from the mental eye to the physical eye, and giving to the physical eye an expression of thought instead of sight. wonder whether I make this clear to you. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Abruptly from every part of the room, there broke out the noise of those hoofs again, making the place echo with the sound as if a thousand swine had started suddenly from an absolute immobility into a mad charge. The whole riot of animal sound seemed to heave itself in one wave towards the oddly swaying and circling funnel of black cloud, which rose from the floor to ceiling around the violet and indigo circles. As the sound ceased, I saw something was rising up in the middle of the defense. It rose with a slow, steady movement. I saw it pale and huge. Through the swaying, whirling funnel of cloud, a monstrous pallid snout rising out of that unknowable abyss. It rose higher, like a huge pale mound. Through a thinning of the cloud curtain, I saw one small eye. I shall never see a pig's eye again without feeling something of what I felt then. A pig's eye with a sort of hell light, a vile understanding, shining at the back of it. That rules. I mean, yeah, that is pretty that's scary. Dope as hell. Yeah. yeah, that is pretty scary. Uh, so, yeah, so both of the actual scary stories involve, like, pits opening up in floors and walls, and there being some kind of creature coming out of it. So, and, yeah, and looking at Some you. kind of deep homoeroticism. <laughs> yeah, and also yes. it's gay. <clears throat> so that fucking, honestly, that made the whole thing worth it for me, just that scene. I'm, like, picturing it with, like, like a Mamoru Hosoda like film, like a like a one of those very serious animes. Yeah. Oh my god, it's it's yeah. so easy to see. Like fucking like Princess Mononoke oh, yeah. style. Yeah, you're right about that, I think. And then suddenly, a dreadful terror came over me, for I saw the beginning of the end that I had been dreading all along. I saw through the slow whirl of the cloud curtains that the violet circle had begun to leave the floor. It was being taken up on the spread of the vast snout. Straining my eyes to see through the swaying funnel of clouds, I saw that this violet circle had melted and was running down the pale sides of the snout in streams of violet-colored fire. Oh, oh Jesus. this rules. And as it melted, there came a change in the atmosphere of the room. The black funnel shone with a dull, gloomy red, and a heavy red glow filled the room. The change was such as one might experience if one had been looking through a protective glass at some light, and the glass had been suddenly removed but there was a farther change that I realized directly through my feelings. It was as if the horrible presence in the room had come closer to my own soul. I wonder if I am making it at all clear to you. Before, it had oppressed me somewhat, as a death on a very gloomy and dreary day beats down upon one's spirit. But now there was a savage menace, and the actual feeling of a foul thing close up against me. Yeah? It was horrible. Simply horrible. And then, Baines moved. For the first time since he went to sleep, the rigidity went out of him, and rolling suddenly over onto his stomach, 
he fumbled up in a curious animal-like fashion onto his hands and feet. Then he charged straight across the blue circle towards the thing in the defense. With a shriek, I jumped to pull him back, but it was not my voice that stopped him. It was the blue circle. I made it- it made- ah, gah, gah, gah. Mm, gah, good run. Gah, gah. <laughs> it's the little- the little things, the little things. Yeah, I, that was, was great. Wrong, Thank you. Alright, I'll do my best here. It seems like this is where it gets good, right? Yeah, we're feeling, feeling, feeling good, better yeah. about this. It made him give back from it as though some invisible hand had jerked him backwards. He threw up his head like a hog, squealing with the voice of a swine, and started off round the inside of the blue circle. Round and round it he went, twice attempting to bolt across it to the horror in that swaying funnel of cloud. Each time he was thrown back, and each time he squealed like a great swine, and the sounds echoing around the room in a horrible fashion as though they came from somewhere a long way off. By this time I was fairly sure that Baines had indeed passed the line of retraction, and the knowledge brought a fresh and more hopeless horror and pity to me, and a grimmer fear for myself. I knew that if it were so, it was not Baines I had with me in the circle but a monster, and that for my own last chance to save me, I should have to get him outside of the circle. He had ceased his tireless running round and round, and now lay on his side, grunting continually and softly in a dismal kind of way. As the slowly whirling clouds thinned a little, I saw again that pallid face with some clearness. It was still rising, and f but very slowly, but shit. <laughs> oh. I no, that was a rough one. I that was, that was hiccup. Sorry, I have a horrible monster attacking me in my very bedroom. Uh -oh. Hi. Oh no, Hi, the boy. boy. Yes. He's like, Dad, you're taking too long. Stop. Dad. <laughs> Why aren't you feeding me? Because you already got fed, you little monster. Then more, though. Come here. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, aren't you just a- aren't you just a little <laughs> hog coming up from the abyss? Oh. He is, though. Oh, you squeal- he's squealing. Hey, come here. Here you go. Uh, break from this horror story brought to you by Cat. A fluffy You're little kitty. Should we pass Ken's turn while he deals with Jack? Maybe. Yeah, we Wait, why to, is it Ken's, gonna... why is it Ken's turn? Because I stumbled. Because Chris fucked up. Oh, oh. So Paris, I think it might just go straight to you. Oh, are we just going to me? We're going back to yeah. me? Yeah. Okay, alright, hang on. It was still rising, but slowly, very slowly, and again a hope grew in me that it might be checked by the defense. Quite plainly, I saw that the horror was looking at Baines, and at that moment, I saved my own life and soul by looking down. There, close to me on the floor, was the thing that looked like Baines, its hands stretched out to grip my ankles. Another second, and I should have been tripped outwards. Do you realize what that would have meant? It was no time to hesitate. I simply jumped and came down, crash with my knees on top of Baines. He lay quiet enough after a short struggle, but I took off my braces and lashed his hands up behind him. <laughs> and I shivered with the very touch of him as though I was touching something monstrous. <laughs> By the time I had finished, I noticed that the reddish glow in the room had deepened quite considerably and the whole room was darker. The destruction of the violet circle had reduced the light perceptibly, but the darkness that I am speaking of was something more than that. It seemed as if something now had come into the atmosphere of the room, a sort of gloom, and in spite of the shining of the blue circle and the indigo circle inside the funnel of cloud, there was now more red light than anything else. Opposite me, the huge, cloud-shrouded monster in the indigo circle appeared to be motionless. I could see its outline vaguely all the time, and only when the cloud funnel thinned could I see it plainly, a vast, snouted mound, faintly and whitely luminous, one gargantuan side turned towards me, and near the base of the slope, a minute slit out of which shone one whitish eye. Presently, through the thin, gloomy red vapor, I saw something that killed the hope in me and gave me a horrible despair, for the indigo circle 
the final barrier of the defense, was being slowly lifted into the air. The hog had begun to rise higher. I could see its dreadful snout rising upwards out of the cloud. Slowly, very slowly, the snout rose up and the indigo circle went up with it. In the dead stillness of that room, I got a strange sense that all eternity was tense and utterly still, as if certain powers knew of this horror I had brought into the world. And then, I had an awareness of something coming, something from far, far away. It was as if some hidden, unknown part of my brain knew it. Did you understand? There was somewhere, in the heights of space, a light that was coming near. I seemed to hear it coming. I could just see the body of Baines on the floor, huddled and shapeless and inert, and tied up and so sexy in his rubber suit. <laughs> <laughs> Within the... S- Vulnerable. <laughs> supple. Within the swaying veil of cloud, the monster showed as a vast, pale, faintly luminous mound, hugely snouted, an infernal hillock of monstrosity, pallid and deadly amid the redness that hung in the atmosphere of the room. Something told me that it was making a final effort against the help that was coming. I saw the indigo circle was now some inches from the floor, and every moment I expected to see it flash into streams of indigo fire running down the pale slopes of the snout. I could see the circle beginning to move upward at a perceptible speed. The monster was triumphing. Out in some realm of space, a low, continuous thunder sounded. The thing in the great heights was coming fast, but it could never come in time. The thunder grew from a low, far mutter into a deep, steady rolling of sound. It grew louder and louder, and as it grew, I saw the indigo circle, now shining through the red gloom of the room, was a whole foot off the floor. I thought I saw a faint splutter of indigo light. The final circle of the barrier was beginning to melt. That instant, the thunder of the thing in flight, which my brain heard so plainly, rose into a crashing, a world-shaking bellow of speed making the room rock and vibrate to an immensity of sound. A strange flash of blue flame ripped open the funnel of cloud momentarily from top to base, and I saw for one brief instant the pallid monstrosity of the hog, stark, pale, and dreadful. Then the sides of the funnel joined again, hiding the thing from me as the funnel became submerged quickly into a dome of silent blue light, God's own color. All at once it seemed the cloud had gone, and from floor to ceiling of the room in awful majesty, like a living presence, there appeared that dome of blue fire banded with three rings of green light at equal distances. There was no sound or movement, not even a flicker. Nor could I see anything in the light, but looking into it was like looking into the cold blue of the skies. But I felt sure that there had come to our aid one of those inscrutable forces which governed the spinning of the outer circle, for the dome of blue light, banded with three green bands of silent fire, was the outward a visible sign of an enormous force, undoubtedly, of a defensive nature. Through ten minutes of absolute silence, I stood there in the blue circle, watching the phenomenon. Minute by minute, I saw the heavy repellent red driven out of the room as the place lightened quite noticeably. And as it lightened, the body of Baines began to resolve out of a shapeless length of shadow, detail by detail, until I could see the braces with which I had lashed his wrists together. And as I looked at him, His body moved slightly, and in a weak but perfectly sane voice, he said, I've had it again! My God, I've had it again! (laughs) I'm having one! (laughs) Coming! I knelt down quickly by his side and loosened the braces from his wrists, helping him to turn over and sit up. He gripped my arm a little crazily with both hands. I went to sleep after all, he said, and I've been down there again. My God, it nearly had me. I was down in that awful place that it seemed to be just around a great corner and I was stopped from coming back. I seemed to have been fighting for ages and ages. I felt I was going mad, mad. I've been nearly down into a hell. I could hear you calling down to me from some awful height. I could hear your voice echoing along yellow passages. They were <laughs> yellow. I know they were. And I tried to come and I couldn't. <laughs> But that's denial. Yeah. Oh no, he couldn't come. <laughs> oh, this whole yeah, thing was wasn't worth that thousand dollars, Karnacki. Did did you oh, see me? God. I asked him when he stopped, gasping. No, he answered, leaning his hand against my. Damn it! His head. Ugh. So close. Mm. So close. Story. Oh. So, Ken, would you like to do this one? 
No, he answered, leaning his head against my shoulder. I tell you, it nearly got me that time. I shall never dare go to sleep again as long as I live. Why didn't you wake me? <laughs> I did, I told him. I had you in my arms most of the time. <laughs> you kept looking up into my eyes as if you knew I was there. Aww. I know, he said. If we just lay here. I know, he said. I remember now, but you seem to be up at the top of a frightful hole. Miles and miles up from me, <laughs> and those horrors were grunting and squealing and howling and trying to catch me and keep me down there. But I couldn't see anything, only the yellow walls of those passages, and all the time there was something round the corner. Anyway, you're safe enough now, I told him, and I'll guarantee you shall be safe in the future. The room had grown dark, save for the light from the blue circle. The dome had disappeared, the whirling funnel of black cloud had gone, the hog had gone, and the light had died out of the indigo circle. And the atmosphere of the room was safe and normal again. Very normal. <laughs> Completely normal. Extremely it's normal. normal. As I proved by moving the switch which was near to me so as to lessen the defensive power of the blue circle and enable me to quote-unquote feel the outside tension. Then I turned to Baines. Come along, I said. We'll go and get something to eat and have a rest. But Baines was already sleeping like a tired child, his head pillowed on his hand. Poor little devil, I said as I picked him up in my arms. Poor little devil. This dude is small enough that Karnaki can just scoop him up. Just picks him yeah. up, we'll just like scoops him. He gives him a little scoopa. I walked across to the main switchboard and threw over the current so as to throw the quote unquote V protective pulse out of the four walls and the door. Then I carried Baines out into the sweet, wholesome normality of everything. <laughs> out of the rubber room where we were dressed like rubber pigs. It seemed wonderful coming out of that chamber of horrors. And it seemed wonderful still to see my bedroom door opposite. Wait, this room in his house is right next to his bedroom? Easy and, and, he's, and he's carrying the, the small, adorable man out and towards his bedroom. It's happening. After their very intense play session. <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean, like, damn. Yeah, yeah. My bedroom door opposite, wide open, with the bed looking so soft and white as usual, so ordinary and human. Can you chaps understand? Oi, chap. <laughs> Poor blimey. I carried Baines into the room and put him on the couch, and then it was I realized how much I'd been up against, for when I was getting myself a drink, I dropped the bottle and had to get another. After I had made Baines drink a glass, I laid him on the bed. Now, I said... At least we know Karnaki's good at aftercare. <laughs> now, I said, look into my eyes fixedly. Do you hear me? You are going off to sleep safely and soundly, and if anything troubles you, obey me and wake up. Now, sleep! 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> what could be more relaxing okay. than that? Yeah, very relaxing. So, we have pig play and... Hypno fetish. I mean, we've had in a the same yeah story. We have had a lot of things. <laughs> Pig play, rubber, hypno, like basic. We, we BDSM. had a little blood sport. Blood play. Yeah. Yeah. A little blood play. I swept my hands down over his eyes half a dozen times, and he fell over like a child. You know how kids are, always toppling over. <laughs> Kids are, yep. You know, kids are Fall passing apart. out all the time. I knew that if the danger came again, he would obey my will and wake up. I intend to cure him, partly by hypnotic suggestion, partly by a certain electrical treatment which I am getting Dr. Witten to give him. Okay, electroshock fetish, yeah. That night, I slept on the couch. And when I went to look at Baines in the morning, I found him still sleeping. So leaving him there, I went into the test room to examine results. I found them very surprising. Inside the room, I had a queer feeling, as you can imagine. It was extraordinary. Yeah, I've yeah. had several. <laughs> It was extraordinary to stand there in that curious bluish light from the treated windows and see the blue circle lying still glowing where I had left it, and further on, 
Sir. Sir, please. Sir, we're recording a podcast. <laughs> He's got commentary. Well, he needs to stop having commentary. Wait, did Jack yeah, the Lad you're... make you mess up? I, I'm going to call that a distraction, yeah, because somebody continues to scream about the hog. I think we're all going to be screaming about the hog for many nights. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm about to have nightmares just Me like Bane's. Preparing. <laughs> yeah? All right, well, so? I guess who's next? Isn't it you, Chris? Well, it depends on if we want to pass it to D or just straight to me. I think we can pass it to D. Yeah. Wait, but that... Oh, yeah. sure, whatever. You can pass it to D? <clears throat> and further on, the defense, lying circle within circle, all out, and in the center, the glass leg table standing where a few hours before it had been submerged in the horrible monstrosity of the hog. I tell you, it all seemed like a wild and horrible dream as I stood there and looked. I have carried out some curious tests in there before now, as you know. But I've never come nearer to a catastrophe. I left the door open so as not to feel shut in, and then I walked over to the defense. I was intensely curious to see what had happened physically under the action of such a force as the hog. I found unmistakable signs that proved the thing had been indeed a psyche manifestation. For there had been no psychic or physical illusion about the melting of the violet circle, there remained nothing of it except a ring of patches of melted glass. The gutta base had been fused entirely, but the floor and everything was intact. You see, the Saiti forms can often attack and destroy, or even make use of, the very defensive material used against them. The interesting side note, the gutta base he's referring to as gutta percha is kind of a, a kind of early rubber made from a tree sap. Oh, rubber nice. tree sap. <laughs> Stepping over the outer circle and looking closely at the indigo circle, I saw that it was melted clean through in several places. Another fraction of time and the hog would have been free to expand. <laughs> As an expand hog. Expand hog. <laughs> I actually just pictured the fuck like Pink Floyd's big like Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I All lost right. it. Another fraction of time, and the hog would have been free to expand as an invisible mist of horror and destruction into the atmosphere of the world. And then... Yeah, just like <laughs> just Peter Frampton's balloon. balloon, what do you know? <laughs> In that very moment of time, salvation had come. I wonder if you can get my feelings as I stood there staring down at the destroyed barrier. Karnaki began to knock out his pipe, which is always a sign that he has ended his tale, oh, and is ready God. to answer any questions we may want to ask. Taylor was first in. Why didn't you use the electric pentacle as well as your new spectrum circle? He asked. <laughs> because, replied Karnaki, the pentacle because. is simply defensive, and I wish to have the power to make a focus during the early part of the experiment, and then, at the critical moment, to change the combination of the colors so as to have a defense against the results of the focus. You follow me? No. You see, he went on, <laughs> the fuck? seeing we hadn't grasped his meaning, there can be no focus within a pentacle. It is just of a defensive nature. Even if I had switched the current out of the electric pentacle, I should still have had to contend with the peculiar and undoubtedly defensive power that its form seems to exert, and this would have been sufficient to blur the focus. In this new research work I'm doing, I'm bound to use a focus, and so the pentacle is barred. But I'm not sure it matters. I'm convinced this new Spectrum defense of mine will prove absolutely invulnerable when I've learned how to use it. But it will oh, yeah. take me some time. This last case has taught me something new. I had never thought of combining green with blue. But the three <laughs> bands of green and the blue of that dome has set me thinking. If only I knew the right combinations. It's the combinations I've got to learn. You'll understand better the importance of these combinations when I remind you that green by itself is in a very limited way, more deadly than red itself. And red is the danger color of all. Oh my god, what is with this fucking... Oh my god, this color theory, stop it! Tell us, Karnaki, I said. What is the hog? Can you... I mean, what kind of monstrosity is it? Did you really see it, or was it all some horrible, dangerous kind of dream? How do you know it was one of the outer monsters? 
And what is the difference between that sort of danger and the sort of thing you saw in the gateway of the monster case? And Look, what dude, I almost steady... shot a man. I almost shot a man. Like, it was, it was real, <laughs> I almost shot all a right? fucking straight in his brain yeah, it was case. Real, man. It was real, <laughs> Steady, laughed Karnaki. One at a time, I'll answer all your questions, but I don't think I'll take them quite in your order. For instance, speaking about actually seeing the hog, I might say that, speaking generally, things seen of a ghostly nature are not seen with the eyes. They are seen with the mental eye, which has this psychic quality, not always developed to a usable state, in addition to its normal duty of revealing to the brain what our physical eyes record. You will understand that when we see ghostly things... It is often the mental eye performing simultaneously the duty of revealing to the brain what the physical eye sees as well as what it sees itself. The two sights blending their functions in such a fashion gives us the impression that we are actually seeing through our physical eyes the whole of the sight that is being revealed to the brain. In this way, we get an impression of seeing with our physical eyes both the material and the immaterial parts of an abnormal scene. For each part being received and revealed to the brain by machinery suitable to the particular purpose appears to have equal value of reality, that is, it appears to be equally material. Do you follow me? We No. <laughs> no. Nah. <laughs> we nodded our assent, and Karnaki continued. In the same way, were anything to threaten our psychic body, we should have the impression, generally speaking, that it was our physical body that had been threatened because our psychic sensations and impressions would be superimposed upon our physical, in the same way that our psychic and our physical sight are superimposed. Our sensations would blend in such a way that it would be impossible to differentiate between what we felt physically and what we felt psychically. To explain better what I mean, a man may seem to himself in a ghostly adventure to fall actually, that is, to be falling in a physical sense, but all the while it may be his psychic entity or being. Call it what you will, that is falling. But to his brain, there is presented the sensation of falling altogether. Do you get me? No. <laughs> at the same, at the same nope, time, even a please remember that the danger is nonetheless because it is his psychic body that falls. I am referring to the sensation I had of falling during the time of stepping across the mouth of that pit. My physical body could walk over it easily and feel the floor solid under me. But my psychic body was in very real danger of falling. Indeed, I may be said to have literally carried my psychic body over, held within me by the pull of my life force. You see, to my psychic body, the pit was as real and as actual as a coal pit would have been to my physical body. It was merely the pull of my life force which prevented my psychic body from falling out of me, rather like a plummet, down through the everlasting depth in obedience to the giant pull of the monster. As you will remember, the pull of the hog was too great for my life force to withstand. And psychically, <laughs> I began to fall. Hog. Immediately on my brain was recorded a sensation identical with that which would have been recorded on it had my actual physical body been falling. It was a what? risk I took, but as you know, I had to take it to get to the switch in the battery. When I had that physical sense of falling and seemed to see the black misty sides of the pit all around me, it was my mental eye recording upon the brain what it was seeing. My psychic body had actually begun to fall and was really below the edge of the pit, but still in contact with me. In other words, my physical, magnetic, and psychic halos were still mingled. I'm going to kill Karnaki. I'm going to <laughs> kill the author with my bare hands. I'm going to go, back in go time down to fucking him. pig hell and find him. Take him out. We're going, I'm going to, pig to pig hell. hell. Everybody get your... Let's go to Pig Hell! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, 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 Pig yeah! Hell. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell road trip. Woo! My physical body was still standing firmly upon the floor of the room, but if I had not each time by effort or will forced my physical body across to the side, my psychic body would have fallen completely out of contact with me, and gone like some ghostly meteorite obedient to the pull of the hog. The curious sensation I had of forcing myself through an obstructing medium was not a physical sensation at all, as we understand that word, but rather the psychic sensation of forcing my entity to recross the gap that had already formed between my falling psychic body, now below the edge of the pit, and my physical body standing on the floor of the room. And that gap was full of a force that strove to prevent my body and soul from rejoining. It was a terrible experience. 
Do you remember how I could still see with my brain through the eyes of my psychic body, though it had already <laughs> fallen some distance out of me? That is an extraordinary thing to remember. Chris, I'm, so I'm sorry, but, like, I feel like you're just repeating the same, like, 15 words in a different order. Like, I feel like that's been happening for, yeah. like, for, like, five minutes. Yeah, yeah, oh. same. I, f I feel like he's actually found a way to, like, like the black creeping Do you guys understand how, as a visually impaired person, how difficult it is for me to differentiate between seeing the words psychic and physical every time they pop up? Yeah, I can only yeah, imagine. Yeah, it's not great, and I'm really sorry that you're reading this part because it is just awful. However, to get ahead, all ghostly phenomena are extremely diffuse in a normal state. They become actively physically dangerous in all cases where they are concentrated. The best off-hand illustration I can think of is the all-familiar electricity, a force which, by the way, we are too prone to imagine we understand because we've named and harnessed it, to use a popular phrase. But we don't understand it at all. It is still a complete fundamental mystery. Well, electricity when diffused is an imagined and unpictured something. But when concentrated, it is sudden death. Have you got me in that? Take, for instance, no? that explanation is a very, very crude sort of illustration of what the hog is. The hog is one of those million mile long clouds of nebulosity lying in the outer circle. It is because of this that I term those clouds of force the outer monsters. What they are exactly is a tremendous question to answer. I sometimes wonder whether Dodgson there realizes just how impossible it is to answer some of his questions, and Karnacki laughed. Haha, <laughs> that fucking idiot. You didn't understand any of that dumb shit I just said. But to said. make a brief attempt at it, there is around this planet, and presumably others, of course, circles of what I might call emanations. This is an extremely light gas, or shall I say ether. Poor ether! It's been hard worked in its time! Go back one moment to your school days and bear in mind that at one time the Earth was just a sphere of extremely hot gases. These gases condensed in the form of materials and other solid matters, but there are some that are not yet solidified air, for instance. Well, we have an Earth sphere of solid matter on which to stamp as solidly as we like, and round about that sphere there lies a ring of gases that constitute The consti- fuck. <laughs> God. Oh, you God. done very well. Yeah, you have you read the worst part of this, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Someone bring uh, us home, please. Well, we have an Earth sphere of solid matter on which to stamp as solidly as we like. And round about that sphere there lies a ring of gases, the constituents of which enter largely into all life, as we understand life. That is air. <laughs> you know, air is life. Okay. Air. Okay. <laughs> but this is not the only circle of gas which is floating round us. There are, as I have been forced to conclude, larger and more attenuated gas belts lying zone on zone far up and around us. These compose what I have called the inner circles. They are surrounded in turn by a circle or belt of what I have called, for want of a better word, emanations. This circle which I have named the Outer Circle, cannot lie less than 100,000 miles off the Earth and has a thickness which I have presumed to be anything between 5 and 10 million miles. So, okay, so at this point, he's just like... Any, <laughs> anywhere just... between 5 miles and <laughs> so 10 million point, miles. He is just making <laughs> shit up. Like, yeah, I don't know, there's, there's gas circles. I don't and, know, like, there's like, like farts around the <laughs> world or something and they got monsters in it. Just look out for monsters yeah, in so your well, farts. <laughs> yeah, this, this just is like somebody getting caught in something and having to do their best to explain it and knowing that they can just bullshit and get away with it. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, the, the, hog is, the hog is anywhere from three inches to 400 mm -hmm. trillion me, miles baby. long. <sighs> <laughs> I believe, but I cannot prove, that it does not spin with the Earth, but in the opposite direction for which a plausible cause might be found in the study of the theory upon which a certain electrical machine is constructed, I have reason to believe that the spinning of this, the outer circle, is distributed from time to time through causes which are quite unknown to me, but which I believe are based in physical phenomena. Now, the outer circle is the psychic circle, yet it is also physical. To illustrate what I mean, I must again 
instance, electricity, and say that just as electricity discovered itself to us as something quite different from any of our previous conceptions of matter, so is the psychic or outer circle different from any of our previous conceptions of matter. Yet, it is nonetheless physical in its origin. And in the sense that electricity is physical, the outer or psychic circle is physical in its constituents. Speaking pictorially, it is physically <laughs> to the inner circle what the inner circle is to the upper strata of the air and what the air as we know that intimate gas is to the waters and the waters to the solid world. You get my line of suggestion? Fuck no, no, Karnaki, no. what are you saying? <laughs> the, the I got a lot of intimate gas, gas in me right now after the dinner I had, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, intimate gas can be only can be only one thing. We all nodded, and Karnaki resumed. Well, now let me apply this to what I am leading up to. I suggest that these million-mile-long clouds of monstrosity with float in the psychic or out of circle are bred of the elements of that circle. They are tremendous psychic forces bred out of its elements, just as an octopus or shark is bred out of the sea, or a taiga or any other physical force is bred out of the elements of its earth and air surroundings. What? What the fuck? He's saying that, like, the gas of? demons fuck each other and they're all made of gas. Just like earth creatures fuck each other and they're all made out of, like, earth stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Uh, okay. I can't. So, like, when, when Chris read, the, I think it was Chris or maybe it was Ken. When one of you read the line that was like, ah, oh, Karnaki, like, tapped out his pipe, I was like, oh, thank God, we're near the end. And now I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no, I gotta explain my whole philosophy. Well, because usually he kicks them the fuck out right after he's done with the story, so... Ugh, alright, sorry, I need some yeah. water. Since when does he answer questions? What's this fucking Q&A shit? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Ahem. <sighs> to go further, a physical man is composed entirely from the constituents of earth and air, by which terms I include sunlight and water and condiments... <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I'm sorry, condiments. Ketchup. Oh, I gotta put some togarashi you know, on really. Yeah, Man is made of, you know, 80% water, a little, little sunlight, a little earth, and a little mustard. It's fine. A oh, dash of paprika. Dash of paprika. <laughs> All right. A little Dijon. In other words, without earth and air and mayonnaise, he could not be. <laughs> or to put it another way, earth and air breed within themselves the materials of the body and the brain, and therefore, presumably, the machine of intelligence... Now, apply this line of thought. Apply those condiments to the psychic or outer circle, which, though so attenuated that I may crudely presume it to be approximate to our conception of ether, yet contains all the elements for the production of certain phases of force and intelligence. But these elements are in a form as little like matter as the emanations of scent are like the scent itself. Equally, the force and intelligence producing capacity of the outer circle no more approximates to the life and intelligence producing capacity of the earth and air than the results of the outer circle constituents resemble the results of earth and air. I wonder whether I make it clear. No. no. <laughs> I honestly don't know how I'm reading this so effectively because I feel like I'm just saying words. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> that might be it. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's word salad. For it's like real, I feel like an alien. Like I kind of know how humans talk, so I can like put the words in certain inflections and make it sound like a, a real sentence with meaning. But I'm just saying, fucking whatever. And so it seems to me, we have the conception of a huge psychic world bred out of the physical, lying far outside of this world and completely encompassing it. Except for the doorways, about which I hope to tell you some other evening. This enormous psychic world of the outer circle breeds, if I may use the term, its own psychic forces. Don't, and intelligence don't use is it. monstrous <laughs> and otherwise, just as this world produces its own physical forces and intelligences. Beings, animals, insects, etc. Monstrous and otherwise. The monstrosities of the outer circle are malignant towards all that we consider most desirable, just in the same way a shark or a taiga may be considered malignant. I, fu okay, fuck you, Karnaki. You leave sharks and tigers alone. They are fine. Yeah. I consider I consider sharks very useful to my everything I consider. Because what I consider desirable is sharks, yeah. Karnaki. We don't need, so to, be, my we need to create more <laughs> negative, you know, 
Negative shark media attention. Negative predator Ugh. fucking media, yeah. Fuck you, man. And for and second of all, uh, the monstrosities of outer circle are not malignant to everything I consider most desirable. Because I would have loved it if Karnak had blown his brains out. Speaking of, Paris, why don't you just fucking blow this story's brains out, please? I am. Yeah. Click, click, boom. Yes and no, I answered. You've been a brick to make the attempt, but there are still Whoa, about- Whoa, Paris, you skipped, like, a whole paragraph. No. No, I- Wow, yeah, no, you skipped I didn't. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, no, it, it's not there. Paris, uh, I have a whole other oh, paragraph that, oh, after Chris, which you just- Chris, when I- Okay, I'm gonna read. The monstrosities of the outer circle are, are, are outer, the outer circle are malignant towards all that we consider most desirable, just in the same way a tiger, a shark, or a tiger may be considered malignant. And if I click next, it just says yes and no. I answer. No, I have a whole entire thing here. We are looking at the same document. The monstrosities of the outer circle are malignant towards all that we consider most desirable, just in the same way a shark or a tiger may be considered malignant, in a physical way to all that we consider desirable. They are Dude, predatory. I don't understand, but that does not... <laughs> hang on. I, I want to share my screen. Yeah, that's, that's what I've got here. I want you all to know I'm not insane. I just, I feel like you <laughs> almost think I'm so stupid, but I'm... I don't think you're stupid. I think something no, got I, blocked no, I in think... your file. Yeah, because I don't click next, yeah, Paris. I, think the, I, think the I just have it on my phone, the outer circle so I'm not you. clicking next. I think that it cut off a paragraph, like a half of this paragraph. Two oh. paragraphs. All right, well, yeah. I guess I literally can't read it. I it's literally probably just can't an e -reader read fuck That's up. That's stupid. Fuck. The monstrosities of the outer circle are malignant towards all that we consider most desirable, just in the same way a shark or a tiger may be considered malignant in a physical way to all that we consider desirable. They are predatory as all positive forces predatory. They have desires regarding us which are incredibly more dreadful to our minds when comprehended than an intelligent sheep would consider our desires towards its own carcass. They plunder and destroy to satisfy lusts and hungers, exactly as other forms of existence plunder and destroy to satisfy their lusts and hungers. I have none of this. And the desire... <laughs> In my copy, none of this. And the desire of these monsters is chiefly, if not always, for the psychic entity of the human. But that's as much as I can tell you tonight. Some evening I want to tell you about the tremendous mystery of the capital P psychic capital D doorways. <laughs> In the meantime, have I made things a bit clearer to you, Dodgson? Fuck you, Karnaki. That's Dodgson. He said fuck yes you. Yes and no, I answered. He, he said you've been a brick to make the attempt, but there are still about 10,000 other things I want to know. <laughs> yeah, like, where do you get off? In the room immediately across from his bedroom. We've yeah, been it's this. covered in rubber. We know. We know where he gets off. Karnaki stood up. Out you go, he said, using the recognized formula in friendly fashion. Out you go. I want to sleep. And shaking him by the hand, we strolled out onto the quiet embankment. Why would you shake his hand? I know where those Oh, it's over. Yeah, you know where it's been. He just told you where it had been. In minute detail. Oh, it's over. <sighs> I fucking I shake his hand to just throw over. him out the so fucking mad. window. I'm so mad. I can't believe <laughs> that over. I couldn't fucking end that. It is over. That's the fucking curse of the hog, Paris. Is what that was. Curse of the hog. <sighs> that's the that's the sweet fat curse of the hog. Oh, the hog. Uh, well, thank you all for coming with us on that Karnaki journey. Uh, Holy shit. We're approaching. Good. Two and a half hours Good here. Blood. Three hours nearly. <laughs> Almost three hours oh of raw God. audio. Yeah. Raw hog audio. Is this what people... This is what, like, knights felt like after a long, like, a battle together. <laughs> Kinship. I, I, I want to link arms with all of you and just not... Yeah, I want to our quest. Ugh, yeah, I... Yeah, and yet we're not getting paid for it, so... <laughs> Yeah, no, but it we was did it for glory. honor. We did it for honor. We did. We could get paid to it if people would donate to our respective Patreon. It's, it's that's as very we do, true. We do both have Patreon dot com slash antiques freaks or Patreon dot com slash terrible book club. <laughs> oh. We do it for you. I audio edit for you. All those pig squeals. <laughs> Chris, I'm so sorry. This is gonna be a rough edit. <laughs> <sighs> 
shall yeah. be my masterpiece. Oh, I'm gonna be, gonna be I'm gonna be complaining wiggly. the whole time, it's be... <laughs> but it's gonna come out the other end special. I hope it's gonna come out the other end like a a pale hog snout from hell, mm-hmm. beautiful and pristine. Just and a terrifying. symphony of squeals. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there was there, there was like a maybe a five minute span where that was really there cool. was some good parts in here. Yeah, and then the rest of it happened. Yeah, except when he was like, "All right, shit's getting real. I might shoot this guy in the head." He was like, "But then I moved this plate three inches to the left, and then I <laughs> took five steps to the right. Then I moved northward through the room, and that the blue oh, circle I was my hands next on to my the hips, and circle. I put my knees in tight. Then I was in the red circle, but that was farther out. It was like thirty inches from the first circle that was it's blue." Like, it's like listening to someone narrate a game of fucking Twister. Like, I just... Oh, oh God, God, yeah. <laughs> then my left foot... Hawk's oh not blue. God, yeah. Oh, and also, did you not... Like, this... Is this the origin of the phrase deus ex machina? Because he is saved literally by God's blue light just coming no, in. The origin of the phrase yeah, deus yeah, ex yeah. machina is the ancient... World of theater. <laughs> That's why it's a Latin phrase. Oh well, I don't know. I, I'm thinking like li- in literary terms, like where you know. Yeah, listen, yeah, we've all gone a little hog long. wild here, so. Oh, Chris. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, it just felt like wow. This is just literally that phrase. Like you literally are just. <sighs> I just love that, like. Yeah, that, like, Karnaki was doing such a good job, I guess, summoning Hog, that God was just like, oh, fucking tight, can't believe he did that. And then, and was just like, I better get him out of this jam. And then God's right, like, God's <laughs> like, well, you know, well, I mean, what are the chances that these circumstances are gonna happen again? We got a, a rubber yeah. room, a guy with rainbow vacuums, two men in rubber pig suits, you know, I mean, I just really feel like this is a unique case. I'm gonna rescue him. <laughs> And then, and then God, like, kind of, he leans in and he's like, this fucking green circle is inside of bro, you didn't get your circles right. Yeah, I just, I just don't think it's very interesting when your story is like, right as I was about to go mad, the blue light of God fixed everything. The end. Like. Yeah, G- Jesus H. Christ himself descended, he gave me a fucking I would have <laughs> much preferred if he had figured something out, or even About better. Himself. And his yeah. desires. E- yeah, even better if the hog, if if he and uh B- Barnes Baines, Baines, if he and Baines, Baines just got on the back of the hog and rode off to gay hell together, like never to be heard from again, that really would have oh, been the super hell, like in Supernatural. Yeah, uh, sure, that. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, honest to God, if if it had been like Karnaki been partially tainted by the hog. And it had like opened his eyes up into more of the mysteries. That yeah, would have been we went like, bloodborne cool on this ending. shit. Like Karnaki's like, I guess I'm part fucking yeah, like I'm part hog now, but I can I can see the fucking colors of the yeah, universe. Yeah, that would have been like, so much sweet. more satisfying than this. I would have even taken. I tripped and fell into the controls, and it changed the colors, and it saved me by accident. <laughs> I mean, st- I would have still yeah. been mad at that, but less mad, less mad for sure. Okay. We're done. Like we're done here, right? Like it, it's all over. <laughs> like, you know, we're staring into the black gaping maw before us. And so... Yeah, I mean, a I have. Of light. I'm, I mean, I have my pistol here, so you know, like it's just <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. I was, the, the the thing is, for a while, I was considered <laughs> yeah. shooting everyone around me. Myself. Done. Oh, I'm. Thank you, everyone, for your patience and uh, endurance this evening. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, good lord. We'll see you. Whatever. We'll, we'll see how. We'll have to see what Ken has cooked up for us next time. Yay! Okay. Bye, all everybody. Right, done my recording. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Stop. Whew, that was a doozy, huh? All right, everyone. Thanks for sharing our journey into hog hell on this one. An extra thanks to our patrons, like Greg. Veronica, Will, D, Jared, Lynn, Senia, Jakub, Lycoris, Elliot, Kieran, Martin, J, Scott G, Luchek, CTAP1, Miri, Yanka, David, Anya, Anonymous, Patricia, Austin, Donnie, Crimson, Paladin, Callum, Beast with the Least, Archagent Everlasting, 
Caroline, Scott H., and our newest patron, Robin. Thanks for joining the Terrible Book Club Club. Terrible Book Club, Terrible Club. It's not a terrible club. It's actually pretty rad. We've got a lot of extra audio-visual weirdness that we put up there just for funs. And right now, that includes uh, an Elden Ring Let's Play, kind of. I'm just throwing up the raw footage from our Twitch streams in there because, hey, it's been eating our lives. So might as well create content from it while we're at it. All right, everyone. See you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Terrible Book Club. Terrible Book Club is an independent podcast produced by your hosts, Paris and Chris. Sound design and audio editing by Chris with sound effects and music by Epidemic Sound and sometimes also Chris. Our theme song is Kiss by Yearn, which is, you guessed it, actually also Chris. You can find more of his soothing synthy sounds on Bandcamp at yearn.bandcamp.com. Do you want us to review a book of your choice on the show? Do you want access to some extra audiovisual weirdness? If so, become a patron at patreon.com slash terriblebookclub. If you'd like to send us a one-time tip instead, you can do that at ko-fi.com slash terriblebookclub. You can also support TBC for free by sharing the show on social media, following our accounts on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Goodreads, telling your friends about your favorite episode, or by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or anywhere else on the internet. To send us book recommendations or your adorable pet photos, send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com. <laughs>